Okay, so hello everyone, welcome. So this is the beginning of uh, Raiders of the Serpent Sea. I believe all of the uh, players are ready to go as well, and uh, we think we're set up uh, ready for for this new campaign. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the opening uh, monologue, and then we will uh, we will be going from there. Once there was a world, another world that we will call the Lost Lands. All know the story of Mergul and his folly, his vanity, devishness, and longing for power that doomed the Lost Lands. Mergul brought about the end, yet Alderhein, in her infinitely growing wisdom, understood how he might also become a beginning. As she conjured the magnificent rainbow portal, she pierced Mergul again and again, blood sprayed covering her, the spear, and ultimately spilling into the void. That blood was transmogrified by the power of the portal, and it expanded. There on the other side, it simmered and bubbled, a vast sea of crimson. Her next strokes were precise, bits of flesh that twisted and coiled and grew, wrapping around, twisting against that sea of blood. The two, flesh and blood, land and sea, fought their first wars between them, struggling to find a balance. The largest chunk of flesh became the inner lands, small bits, the other continents, and the smallest bits of flesh became the uncountable islands of the Serpent Sea. And yet, despite these gruesome wounds, Mergul still lived. His lifelight dimming in his eyes, she struck him again and again. His leg and arm bones became the great mountain range of Turinfall. Other bones became smaller mountain ranges, and his shattered teeth, the numerous boulders dotting Grimir. A death stroke parted his head from his shoulders. All his body was cast through, torn and shredded, and repurposed to become the la living land to shelter those he had failed. The land of Grimir. Our story in this world begins as the long winter persists, and food grows ever scarcer. Ice clogs harbours that normally see little more than a skiff of snow. Fields have been abandoned for in once fertile lands. The creatures of the forest prowl ever closer to the homesteads. An urge is rising in each clan to protect themselves, threatening the fragile unity held together by the Volve. It is these seers that have charged you with the great adventure into the unknown. Some of you have joined the longship of legendary raider Harolf voluntarily. Others have been conscripted along the way since departing to brave the wildest sections of the Serpent Sea. Weeks have passed. Two ships have already been lost, countless men and women drowned, yet you still continue on. Arolf insists you shall reach the tower in a day or two at most. Fog covers the Serpent Sea, so much thicker than in previous years. Swollen with cold moisture and rolling across the waters, the fog hides the great mountains to the north. It hides the moon, and during the day it even mutes the sun. There is only the endless chop 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 as the waters of the sea pound against the sides of your ship and the murmured conversations of the crew. You watch the waters carefully for signs of serpents. Only the head remains of the one Harolf slew yesterday. The great hero leans against the figurehead of your ship, upon which he has nailed the sea creature's head. Wind tosses Harolf's brown hair as he tugs on his scruffy beard as he stares out to sea. And it's kind of at that point that the camera will pan back slightly from him at the at the mast uh, at, the, at the front of the ship there, and we see another figure standing next to him um, as they sort of looking looking out to sea at that moment. And Conrad, that's going to be your character. So can you uh, can you describe what we uh, what we see with her, please? You see a towering woman, well over six foot, closer to six and a half feet. She has long auburn reddish hair. Um, most of it's tumbling down her back, but she has two braided um, parts on either side uh, of her um, shoulders. Uh, a long kind of bluish grayish uh, robe uh, with fur lined cuffs and uh, a fur kind of shawl. Um, she's very pale, and she has a look on her face 
uh, that's very placid. Um, and you can see if you're paying attention to where her hands are that she has tattoos that are running the length of the back of her hand and go up her digits. And each of her fingernails actually has a different rune on it. Um, and she has, for the most part, been pretty quiet this entire trip. That's fair enough. I mean, Harolf uh, sort of is looking over to you and sort of says at the thing and... Uh, how are you, uh, how are you holding up, Caesar? I'm fine. Just as I was yesterday, and I hope that you are as well. <laughs> I ask you that question every day and I get the same response. One day I'll get something more. <laughs> and he chuckles when to something himself. <laughs> changes, then I will change my response. <laughs> Do you require anything? Are you hungry? Do you have a thirst? No, I'm I'm good. I just wish we were... I wish we were done with the travel. This has been too long now at this point, but I'm sure we must be we must be getting closer to the tower. The Volve can't be wrong. It. If you say it, then I'm sure that it is true. Yeah, something in my gut tells me we're close. I get feelings on that sort of thing. You know that much about me. I do. And I trust you implicitly. As I'm sure the rest of our crew does as well. Speaking of that, how have you been getting on with them? I know you're quiet, but... Uh, have you been able to... Uh, well, at least start to uh, get a feeling for some of them? I have no opinion about any of them. The brothers are... Unique. Yeah. In that they are very different. And that was... From Absolutely. That that was a family reunion I wasn't expecting when he joined. <laughs> but uh, uh, anyway, we shall uh, we shall see. And uh, so as the camera's sort of panning there, and there's the two of you at the front of the ship, uh, you can see in uh, flapping in the wind off of the front of the ship. There, there is a large purple banner. Uh, it's the symbol of the Volve. Uh, Every raider ship needs to have a uh, a banner on the front of it, uh, otherwise, or to denote what, um, what 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 group you're actually from, if that makes sense. This is what allows you guys to pass through the serpent seas um, unattacked by other raiders, if that makes sense, because you're carrying you have this banner on the front. Um, yeah, it's odd to not have the Horwick one for uh, uh, that you would normally have, but uh, yeah, since you guys set off. Uh, it was one of the first things he changed over to the symbol of the Volve when you were when you went when you were making your way out to sea. It's very unusual to have that banner, but I think as you guys are uh, having that conversation and you talk about the brothers, I think we have the camera sort of pan back across the ship a little bit, and I it, it the, I think the um, camera sort of uh, lands on uh, two two figures that seem to be across from each other on uh, uh, across the boat uh, and they've been eyeing each other awkwardly and there's been a been a few moments silence but uh, I'm going to say uh, Jess in this case can you describe your character first please of uh, of these two that we were uh, we're catching up with um Hodar is an individual whom I feel if you saw them asleep in an alleyway, you'd probably assume that they were a dead corpse that had been there for several days. Um, it's a very... <laughs> they are a very sickly-looking individual. Their skin is paper-thin, and you can see signs of their skeleton beneath. Um, <laughs> they are covered in bones of all sorts, very ha uh, very clearly handmade jewellery dangling from around the neck, and... Um, uh, through the ears and whatnot. Uh, the uh, headdress also has a handmade quality to it and seems to have, there seems to have been an attempt at decoration, but the artistic eye may not have been there. Um, they are mostly kind of swamped in a, in a very thick woolen cloak with what was once probably just normal fur um, trimmed around the edge, but bits of moss and fungus have kind of like seeped into it, kind of dyeing it into this kind of earthy green. And beneath that is a simple uh, uh, black robe of sorts 
they're kind of holding on to a um, a spear that seems too big for them. Uh, that's decorated in swathes of uh, mistletoe vines, uh, the berries, as well as little bones that have been tied to, uh, to it. This is, um, Hoda has probably been looking at everyone around with a very neutral expression, but each time they've looked at another member of the on the on the boat, they've taken their time to digest what they're seeing in front of them before moving on. The only time very clear emotion is shown on their face is when looking at their brother across from the way. Looks of annoyance, disgust, and various eye rolls at their behaviour is <laughs> are common <laughs> when making eye contact with their brother across the way. Um, but yes, this is a very small individual who probably is quite unsettling to the cat. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. And taking that on board, then, as the camera pans to... Um, uh, we could describe as almost the opposite of uh, of that with the character on the other side, Seb. Sitting uh, across uh, from him, or, or from them, uh, is a, a small man, uh, just five foot three, uh, but packed, packed with muscles. It's basically, he's basically uh, like a circle when you look at him, just so much so much mus muscle packed on a small freight uh he has uh yeah a, a big beard a thick fur coat uh on his side he's uh, carrying the standard raider's axe uh you know just like however like if you didn't know him and you looked at him you think like this is like the example of a raider that's basically what you would think and absolutely. Uh, I mean, he may have been um, uh, almost uh, felt like he was deposited on the ship, but he has fit in quite well in the in the raiding category of what's been going on around him. I, I'm also thinking this might not have been his first rodeo on on, on that kind of a I, I, kind I of think scenario. He has been on his fair few ships before. He's like talk, talking to the people around him. I wouldn't worry. Like I, I'm here. I will. I will protect you all. Like, when I was young, I wrestled three uh, grown men to the ground, and I was only six. <laughs> Trust me, I'm, I'm weak. We're, we're able to do this. Okay, uh, make me a persuasion check, please, as we uh, we see how, uh, if he if he has the chops to back that up in the in the moments. As... <laughs> <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair <laughs> enough. Uh, the... <laughs> The tall can, tales this, have been, it's definitely been a thing on that front. Can, can this please be uh, Jess's character just interrupting me and just <laughs> like making a snide comment about it? Absolutely. They, it they've, been con they've been constantly digging in some ways. And uh, yeah, there's definitely <laughs> been uh, been problems as this going going on. But yeah, as these tall outlandish tales that are being, being told as uh, have been going on as this is going on, I imagine that the uh, camera will pan off to uh, the next person person uh, that we're going to go for and in this case we're going to stick at the top end of the ship here and uh drew can you uh give us a description for rowder please and what she might be up to uh rowder is uh looks no older than early 20s um she is tall um for her age um and fairly well built um but she often talks with the uh of someone with a lot of wisdom. Um, she'll often talk about uh, events in history that happened centuries ago, and um, no one will ever believe her that she was actually there. Um, she's currently wearing uh, on her back layers of um, dark crimson uh draped fabric um, that is torn at the ends and flows in the wind. Uh, she has a mantle uh, of fur. Um, some of you may recognize it as wolf fur um, that is draped over her right shoulder. Um, she also has a shield on her back, but it's splintered and old. Uh, has definitely not seen use in many years. Um, 
also carries uh, a few smaller hand axes and one enormous great axe um, that gives gets a, a few looks as it looks like something far too big for someone of her size. Um, she mostly wears uh, simple, um, almost peasant-like um, garments uh, draped in um, like dark blues and greys um, with only small amounts of, uh, you could almost call it leather armor. Um, she has uh, braces that are fur-lined um, and boots as well. Um, she has long, uh, flowing, ashen silver hair uh, and deep blue eyes. Um, she's a bit of a klutz. Uh, she'll often bump into things. Um, not very dexterous. Um, if any kind of conflict happens uh, on the ship, she is always first to jump in and either try and stop it or join in depending on what happens uh, <laughs> this is probably one of the few moments where she you can see there is actual joy in her face um, she smiles with glee at that not menacingly more like she's going to enjoy uh, the the combat encounter um, and that is Rowdy okay thank you very much so yes as, the, as that's going on then I believe uh Things will pan back a bit further as uh, all that is going on. And then, uh, yeah, we will pass over to Joe's character in this case, and which will be Frida. Yep. Um, Frida will be uh, sitting down. She would be helping out whenever she can. She'll be rowing. Um, even though by looking at her, you'd think um, she's quite intimidating. But if people initiate com uh, conversations with her, she's always super friendly, always eager to listen to any stories so probably listened to um a lot of uh stories of history from um Rauder. Rauder, yeah that's great i think that's Rauder. how you pronounce it yeah um she wears um a sort of fur pelt across her um across her neck and shoulders and underneath you can see like sort of metally armor sort of thing like chain chain mail She's also quite tall. She's about six foot two. Um, looking at her, you probably wouldn't know her race. She is quite rare, but for um, for the stream, she's a half orc. <laughs> uh, she's got quite light blue skin uh, and uh, light gray eyes uh, and with um, braided hair uh, with lots of different coloured um, like ropes holding her hair in, into the braids but she's a very friendly soul even though she doesn't look like it and um, she yeah, she definitely is trying to help as much as she can to uh, to probably prove her worth I guess to be on the boat that's fair enough she certainly proved herself capable as the as of over the days and on, on the ship and, and things like that that would certainly be true yeah uh, that is something we should should address with some of these races uh yeah orcs are a very very rare thing in this world uh kind of like uh wolves as a, as, a, as an animal for example we've uh, we know that one is quite rare so uh, speaking of that then as the camera pans over to jamie's character uh one of the rarer ones what do we see? So, um, Blythe is a fairly tall human, but not really, <laughs> uh, man. Um, he's a, a tuss. Uh, he's got a, a scar over his left eye. Uh, fairly recent, you would uh, imagine. Um, he's got, at, at the moment, he has um, fairly light purple eyes um, he's got silver hair big silver beard he wears a um, fur lined cloak uh, with some uh, leather and chain mail armour underneath um, across his back he's got strapped um, a round shield with uh, a symbol that you have never seen before a uh, symbol of a, of a, a wolf uh, open mouth. I think it's a wolf, anyway. Yeah, yeah. No, you are you are, you are correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
And uh, he also has a snowy white, fairly older uh, wolf puppy um, as his companion. And uh, he's very... Uh, he doesn't quite understand why everyone's so cagey around her. Um, but through talking amongst us, yeah, it, it I don't think anyone's out. ever really seen one. Um, but yeah, yeah this is, I, I keep telling people like they're like, oh, she's she's fairly big, but actually she's still very tiny <laughs> compared to what can be. Um, that's fair. Around her, around her neck, uh, she wears like um, kind of like uh, <laughs> kind of like a dog bandana, <laughs> but it's the it's like the the um. Uh, it's like a flag uh, with the symbol of the, the clan of war on it as well. Fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yes, so yeah, uh, uh, barring barring one other person on the ship who has, who has seen these, yes, uh, the rest of you, it, it is a very unusual creature. Uh, that would definitely have gotten uh, gotten attention. Uh, yeah, clan war are very uh, secretive and there are not many of them that get seen uh, away from their normal land. So yeah, it is kind of unusual that uh, that Jamie's character is here, but uh, again, Harolf has, uh, has, has vouched for him and he was and he was brought on board. but it was there was some eye staring when that uh, when that happened. but um, is there any sort of opening bits that you guys would want to do is there anything that you guys feel that you would be up to on ship and on a that just sets the initial scene uh before we sort of uh we get to the first initial thing it looks like there's a storm coming in um off in the distance right now as you guys are are here but uh for example yeah do, do the brothers converse at all or are they um are they forever trying to avoid each other on ship what how does that work with these two do you think um, uh, Hoda would definitely prefer just disgusted looks and uh, very clear eye rolls and occasional scoffs, and not to engage in conversation, especially if, um, uh, especially if Boulder's keeping himself surrounded by a lot of other people in a very boisterous se uh, setting. Uh, Hoda won't go towards that, uh, but he'll keep close enough just so that. His eye rolls are within view. Yeah, uh, Boulder would always be telling stories, uh, would always surround himself with people, would always try to be the center of attention because that's sort of the sort of person he is. Um, but like in, in like a moment where where like it's it's possible to sort of slip away, he will like. Sort of move over to towards uh, Hoder, and and say something like the lies of, you know, when I'm telling my stories, you really should just like l let it go. Like you shouldn't like try to put me down. It like harshens the mood of everyone. Oh, so I should just let you lie to everyone? Yes. Yes, exactly. Um. No, I'm not going to do that. But it, come on, everyone really enjoys the stories. But when you're like, oh, yeah, I remember you being beat up by your three bullies. Like, it, it's, it just harshens the, 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 the mood, man. It's my job as a, as a brother, you know. Uh, maybe you're actually almost... beat some people up and... Then you'll get some real stories, you know. Look, we've been on a ship for three weeks. Like, I'm just trying to lighten the mood, give everyone a good time. So not everyone wants to kill everybody and ev everyone else. I think they're having a good time laughing at you when I point out the lies. God, you're no fun. <laughs> he like thumbs up and then like turns back to where he's playing like a version of Jax but with tiny bones. <laughs> <laughs> back into his own little uh, yeah, uh, little, little world, world on this one. Bones. Back to uh, the bone zone. Uh, the uh, the dragonborn next to you, uh, Baldor, uh, sort of uh, uh, sort of leans into you a little bit and says, uh, "He uh, 
He really, really doesn't like you at all, does he? Oh, it's fine. It's because I am clearly a better raider than he is. Hmm. And he sort of, he, he, he eyes up and it, eh, he might not be disagreeing in the moment. So he's, uh, he's looking around. He does look, seem look like a his, strange his, one. Look at his crummy ass. Hmm. I do. Anyway. I do remember you from when you were a child. It's been a been a long time. And uh, yeah, he sort of puts out his hand to you a little bit uh, in the moment. Uh, uh, I remember your family. Uh, the name is Scopey. Uh, and he sort of oh, yeah, uh, sort of introduces himself properly uh, as this is going on. Well, we have been on this boat for two weeks. I feel we should have known each other by now. I know, uh, I but know, but I didn't want to get too too close with all of this uh, boisterous action and all of that. But uh, it's when uh, when you were speaking with uh, your brother, I believe, that it reminded me uh, I do know you. And, uh, yeah, he's clearly from the same clan as, uh, as, as you are. And he says, um, why did you sign up? I... I can understand him, but you, I'm more confused by. Well, believe it or not, I, I am confused myself. You see, I was uh, celebrating one of my many victories at the tavern late one night, uh, when someone came up to me, and next thing I knew, I woke up on the ship. They told me they had, I, I had signed up. Um, well, it does sound like something I should do. I am very heroic, you see. Hmm. You had signed up. You were into your cups, I believe, your seventh, and it was suggested that if you did not join, it would be an act of cowardness. And you declared, no one is allowed to call me a coward except the one who called me a coward and ran away. He was the only one to call me a coward, but no one since has been able to get away with calling me a coward. And then you drank two more drinks, you signed up, and then you passed out on the bench with your pants around your ankles for some reason. You forgot the part where he vomited on the deck. No, that was later. He wasn't on the deck yet when I was telling this part of the story. Uh, I used my magic to get you on deck, and then you threw up not only on the disc, but also on the deck. It does sound like me, to be fair. It was you. <laughs> I, I'm not sure. I believe I would have been able to made it, make it up on the ship on my own. But You did not. Oh, you and your stories, you. <laughs> fair, fair enough, as this guy uh, continues on. Uh, no problem. Uh, so, yeah, as this is uh, sort of going on and uh, you, you're having this, this sort of banter as uh, starts to starts to happen, um, there is a roar of thunder that, uh, that sort of jostles everyone in the moment. And what you guys see in the skies for a moment is a... Uh, a green aurora momentarily suspends itself in the skies that's over the great inner mountains. And then there's darkness as that's going on. Uh, suddenly the first sounds of lightning are starting to crackle off as the storm seems to be getting very, very close now and, 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 and seems to be coming on unnaturally quick in the moments as this is all going on. Um, you, it's still sort of lighting up the, uh, the horizon again and again as this is going on. Um, yeah, the, the ship is starting to get um, thrashed by a bit more wind and wave as this is going on. Does anyone do anything as this is starting to, the storm is starting to get stronger here? You're muted. Rolf, Rolf the weather is becoming hmm? concerning. What would you have us do? Uh, we're going to have to wait this down. <laughs> Everyone's going to have to hold on. Strap yourselves down if you can, but uh, it's going to probably get rough fairly quickly. The weather's coming in faster than I knew expected. And you see Question. him starting to, um, yeah, starting to literally uh, tie tie some sort of a rope to one of his one of his legs as this is all going on. On these Viking longboats, are there below decks? There are not below decks on a Viking boat. No, no. I didn't think so. That's why. I, uh, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I'm assuming we also have rope to tie to ourselves. Uh, like, there's there's plenty of rope around on the there's plenty of rigging and rope around on this ship if you wanna if you wish to be starting to pull pull some of that off. Yeah, um, I would in fact, in fact, as this is actually going on, Hodor and Baldor, there's actually one uh, one bit of rope between the two of you. Um, that would be kind of handy, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm oh, going for it. Speed, yeah, speed. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you're like a dex off. Yeah, roll for initiative. <laughs> not quite a roll off for, for initiative, but yeah, both of you uh, do both do a dex check and just see uh, which one of you gets there quicker in the moment. Unless oh, you've got God. some sort of skill that you're going to pull pull off, yeah. yeah. Uh, just dex, straight up dex. We're gonna go for straight up dex in this one, but you, you've got to be a one. Well tricked as soon as, it gets uh, as this is going on, um, Hodor, uh, you go for the go for the uh, the closest piece of rope uh, as this is going on, only to watch it be snatched up uh, by uh, by your brother in the moments, uh, just a little bit quicker in the in the seconds as you start scrambling around looking for. Uh, looking for that. Uh, I'm, I'm going to say for the rest of you, um, if you can give me a d20 roll, uh, above a 10, there's a piece of rope nearby that you can just literally just use in the moments. Uh, Raude does not go for a piece of rope. She just sits on one of the benches and takes a bite out of an apple and, like, completely and, nonchalantly. And fair enough. No problem. No problem. Oh, God. Ooh, a lot of people with not a lot, not a lot of rope. Okay. Anyone else? Life. Blythe is just ushering uh, his wolf underneath, like the, the his little seat he's on. Uh, fair enough. I will. I will have it that you have uh, you the bit of rope that you have there. Uh, go. Uh, you use to tie down your uh, oh, that's, your that's dog. That's what I was going to use it for anyway. Oh, there <laughs> so you that go. Worked out well. <laughs> I'll I'll give you that because uh, we we have to save the animals. Uh, so yes, yeah, as that's course. going on, uh, anyone else need to roll or uh, no? I think we're pretty pretty much there, aren't we? So that's okay. Uh, so yeah, as all this is going on, then um, uh, you now start to see. Uh, uh, the cold and the rain is sort of starting to slant in more. We're getting pummeled more and more as the uh, ship is getting uh, beaten in this now stronger and stronger storm. At the front of the ship, you guys watch as the symbol of the Volve on the on the purple um, uh, banner uh, slips, and the wind is catching it, and it is flying directly sort of down the the side uh, on the on the right hand side of the ship at the moment. It sort of heads off down this way. Does anyone try to do I'll anything? Try and catch it, sure. Uh, yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can definitely, uh, you can definitely try and uh, try and catch it, Frida. As this is all, uh, she would all be done. holding on to her seat while doing oh, it. Oh, then though. disadvantage Just, on that uh, on that yes, roll, that, please, uh, on that one. Uh, so you can go for a uh, an athletics on this one. It's only rolling one again. I'll have to change that in a minute. No problem. No problem. Oh, Jesus. Uh, so yeah, uh, as 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 this is going on, uh, yeah, Frida, your your hand, your one hand out to try and grab the uh, grab the banner as it starts to fly by. But um, yeah, your moments your moments behind as uh, uh, as this is all going on. Uh, it's Wait. in. Did I say, did Blythe see that as well? You can, you can see it, but it's on the other. It is on the other side of the ship, unfortunately. Yeah. But. So Blythe just just uh, tune back to and uh, say, Tolan, the banner. Okay, uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> uh, you as you are yelling out to uh, Zia at the back of the ship. Uh, yes, the the tall folk uh, that uh, yeah, has has been very uh, shall we say calm at the. Uh, uh, so she doesn't rock the boat most of the time. Um, yeah, she will. She will attempt to to grab it in the moments and see how uh, how she will do on that one. Uh, let's have a look at that. So we need an athletics. One second, skills, athletics. There we go. Let's see how she's going to do. Uh, she has disadvantage. Ah, oh, okay. Is so. she? Oh, I thought she'd be fine because she's so big. <laughs> <laughs> she is quite big, isn't she, on that front? But uh, no, she is still half tied down in the boat. So yeah, I'm not going to give her an advantage on it in the mo in the moment. So especially as she's not a player character. Um, so yeah, in as this is all going on, then yeah, you guys, yeah, two of you try to grab at the banner as it uh, as it flies by, um, and it's at that point that the storm catches the boat horribly now as this as the as the uh as the lightning and thunder pulls you up 
I'm going to need everybody to make me a dexterity acrobatics check, please. Oh, Jesus, please. This proper uh, are you, uh, The ones that are tied down with the rope, you have advantage on this. Damn it. <laughs> oh, <thank you. laughs> I'll ask this afterwards, because then it would be metagaming if I just did it now. Oh, God, I Oh, fucking hell, what is going on? You've got two up so far. That's insane. Oh, no. I blame Bioware. <laughs> I blame Bioware. Thank you, Bioware. Okie dokie. Well, well, what I would have asked would have saved me, but oh well. Well then, to say, say, that, I was say the line. Say, um, she, uh, she would have been helping with the uh, the sail and the ropes on the sail, so she would have wrapped it around her, her wrist while trying to help, but okay. it's too late now. Okay, no, no, fair enough. I will... Um, I will because I've probably cut you off a little bit. I will let you, uh, as it's session one, I will let you okay. I will let you have it. Okay, on that one. So what we're looking for is those that didn't make a DC 12 uh, on their on their roll. Uh, uh, you are overboard uh, in these in these moments. Oh no! Oh, unfortunate. I'm I'm fine. Cool. Okay. I'm, so I'm, who I'm who who is way. who is overboard? Is the question I need. And move your token outside the ship, please. I cannot oh, because there is a wall there. Ah, that's true. I can move you though. Okay, so that's you. Is it just Boulder, or is there anyone else in the in these moments? That, uh, if you were being oh, a kind DM, then not me. Game. But if not, I will be. Oh, <laughs> Boulder, it's just oh, you. Oh, put in that the on James, Joe. That was not very nice, was it? Uh, I'm enough. happy to be overboard. <laughs> No, no, it's all, it's it's all good as this is going on. So, okay, Boulder. So, yeah, in these moments as this is all going uh, going on, you will uh, you'll be uh, sliding down the side, and I uh, can. Louder, uh, your uh, barrel has fallen overboard. Yeah. Oh no! I'm wearing chainmail. <laughs> this this is horrible. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Uh, on that one. Okay. Uh, so uh, I am allowed to Not now. Not loud, Hodor. I meant to say. Sorry for confusing you there, Drew. Oh, Kiduki. I will say in unnatural um, speed and and like in in knowing that seems un very very odd. Suddenly, Harolf was at the front, but uh, somehow was there in the moments, like kind of like he almost knew. And he can make a roll. He's allowed to make a roll uh, to try and catch you. And this will oh, be with with, with advantage. Uh, ah, <laughs> something start to. Uh, oh no, my head. On that one. So let's see. He is going to do a skills check here, and we can do acrobatics with advantage. Uh, on that one. Let's see how he's going to do. Uh, and it is just enough. So as Boulder is uh, just as as you're going over and you th and you think you're done for good, uh, this 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 meaty hand is just reaching out for you and like and and you suddenly feel rather than falling far into the water and be gone, this you know this giant mitt has has, has managed to g grab hold of you in the moments as this is all going on, and uh, he's like, ah, grab hold, grab hold, come on. <laughs> and he's trying to pull you up uh, on that one. Uh, th 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 thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rolf. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. And now tie yourself down as much as you can, lad. We've got to keep calm now. Hold it's on, everyone. Well I had this much seawater in my lungs. <laughs> give you, just give me a sec. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's sort of uh, yeah, he's sort of looking around on that one and says, Hold, everyone. It won't be long. And uh, yeah, the uh, the storm will sort of persist for this uh, for this uh, what seems like hours, but it's probably more no more than like ten or fifteen minutes of this that seem to go on. Um, even as the wind and the lightning start to relent, the the rain still drizzles downward, offering little respite. Uh, when you guys do look out over the seas, where there were three ships before the storm. Uh, we end up there being literally only two of the of, of these two uh, of these actually left uh, at that point as uh, yet another longship is lost to the uh, to the storms as, as as this is all going on and uh, yeah uh, it's sort of as you start to realize and assess this uh, yeah Harolf is coming to the same conclusions as this is all going on um, it's odd as the storm completely passes in the moments because you see streaks again of this multicolored light 
filling the skies again. Greens and yellows, reds and blues of the auroras once more. Harolf is weary looking in these moments as uh, as the as this all starts to pass, but um, uh, his beard is matted and soak as, soaked as he smiles grimly. He then uh, starts uh, pulling out uh, drinking horns and uh, he starts to pour a measure of mead into into each of them and starts to pass them round to those that would uh, that would take them in the moments. And he says, "An offering to you, my brave friends." May fate intervene and keep you from the serpent's clutches here. Sky. Skull. And uh, Skull. yeah, yeah, everyone, every, exactly, I everybody, uh, everybody, yeah, yeah, those that do, uh, 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 sort of yell out in the uh, in the moments as this is uh, uh, as you all grow in the, on that one. He uh, he looks very disappointed when he realizes more about the banner. He says that uh, that's going to cause us problems later on. But we're alive and we're through the worst of the storms. At least we'll have to um, we'll have to replace that before we try and make the trip back. Otherwise, uh, <laughs> every ship from here to the other end of the seven seas will uh, will take a liking to this ship. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so uh, a little bit of time will pass as the. The storm will, will, will calm down. Uh, Hrolf kind of spends a bit of time on, on his own and up, up front as this is all sort of going on. Um, yeah, you, you definitely think he is lamenting the loss of the banner, if that makes sense, in the uh, in the in these moments as this is all going on. Uh, Lisa doesn't offer comfort, but she will uh, reach out a hand to his uh, soaked matted beard and, and stroke it very slightly, and you will see that it... Uh suddenly becomes dry as she casts Prestidigitation. And Fair she enough. will do that on any other part of her that got soaked saving uh, Balder. Fair enough. Which fair enough. may or may not be the first time some of you have seen her use magic, but this does show that she is a caster, specifically a wizard. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, certainly magic is rare, fairly rare. So people uh, yeah, may have seen little things over the last few weeks, but not. this is probably the biggest examples. And uh, I feel like this isn't the first time that he's fallen overboard either. So, uh, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> maybe maybe not, but this is probably the closest to being lost is, uh, is, is on that one. Boda has a little tally that he's added to the amount of times that Boulder has fallen off. Well done, stupid. <laughs> keeps it in his robes <laughs> fair enough fair enough and uh, I, w I will give you this that um as in that case and and uh, you have seen others that have been um, sort of uh, uh like an accident's about to happen or something something's about to go down um Horolf is kind of unnaturally able to be there uh, i think some of you would have clocked that in the uh, as uh, over time uh, with some of that that's going on it's that would not be the first example of uh, of him um unnaturally um being in the right place at the right time uh, is certainly a, certainly a truth as this is all going on uh as yeah as you guys are sort of uh, yeah uh, calmly sort of some of you drinking uh, others uh doing bits and bobs as this is going on a few of the raiders uh start to come up to uh to chat with Harolf and uh they they seem to be having a uh, a minor discussion about uh about something uh they appear to be from clan to var and they're they're um they they seem to be speaking and asking a few questions to him uh, as that's going on uh at that point one of them pulls a knife and uh attempts to stab him and Ooh. we're going to uh, attempt to stab Rolf correct and we're going to oh, be rolling. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be rolling in, and we're going to see. Uh, I was just about to ask if I could speak to him as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, yeah. You may. It's, well, if he survives, you may. Uh, you may have uh, some of that. But yeah, we can. Uh, we're going to all roll in as uh, as this is all going on. There's going to be one surprise round of these guys attacking him, and then you guys are going to be in properly after that. Oh, they have adjectives again. The there are a few adjectives for, for 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 the plane raiders. That's definitely oh, true. Glorious. Oh, my God. Yeah, my my group have been very used to having uh, having lots of <laughs> different raiders with uh with with oh, uh, NPCs with names that uh, yeah that are adjective based. Did, yes. did you roll another one, Joe? I did. I'm changing my dice. That's That's three. Uh, what? Yeah, but you got to think now. You've probably got that out of the way. No. No. Not even can't. risking it. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, so as this is, goes on, then I'm going to have these two uh, take their attacks first, and then after that we will uh, we will see how things 
how things progress after that. Uh, right, so, uh, yeah, they're going to... One of them will attack him first. And then... Oh, with a 20 for a 2. And then the second one... Uh, will With a 12, I believe that will possibly miss. It will miss him. Okay, so he uh, he takes two points of damage in this first round, and then uh, then combat will uh, then combat will begin. And up first, I believe. Uh, such as the thing, such as things are. Rowder, you are the first to kind of react, uh, realizing uh, what is uh, what is going on in the moments as this is all happening. <coughs> Um, with uncharacteristically quick reflexes, you see she immediately reaches for the large great axe. Um, and I would like to bonus action rage. Oh, okay. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, it is your turn. Do, you do you do what barbarians do. And then I shall attack. Yeah, these first two up here are the main, main ones that are doing things right now. Oh. Uh. Uh, uh yes, um, I, and you will you will miss with the first one. Level one, guys. Level one. Yeah, and uh, and then, and there will only be one attack uh, at this point as yeah. well. Yeah, level one. Um, oh my god, we've been so used to playing higher. It's <laughs> it, you have to remind yourselves what you're dealing with when you get back to the uh, back to hey, the initial. Regulus only had one attack. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is true. That <laughs> fair, 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 fair. Um, but yeah, if there's nothing else, you've bonus action. Are you moving? I suppose I, uh, maybe I not. I can't really move. No. No. Okay. So that is officially uh, all that done, and then it is uh, it is Blythe. I, I believe that's correct. Uh, where uh, you go? Blythe will uh, just run over and uh, try to grab this one. Okay. No problem. You can definitely uh, definitely grab the third one then. Rowder, what? Don't try and kill them. Why not? We've been on here for so long with them. <laughs> uh, so you're going to do a strength, a, contested strength check, I'm sorry. Yes, so athletics, yeah. Okay, and they're going to just use strength in this case. Let's see how he's going to do. Oh, you got to be an eight. Come on. Uh, okay, uh, you have officially uh, grappled this one in the moments. That is so no problem. i got ten foot of movement left, so can I drag... Uh, you can that half movement. You can definitely yeah. uh, you can definitely do a bit of that as you drag this one back. As he's uh, yeah, he was. Uh, What's got over you? Why are you acting? Like this? As he's trying to yeah, trying to force against you uh, as this is all going on. Uh, next on the list, uh, there will be uh, Runa. She will uh, react in the moments, uh, jumping up, and she will attempt to uh, uh, clock. Clock the one you've grabbed Jamie on the head and see how see how she's gonna do. And with an 18, she does clock him uh, quite nicely on that one. Uh, doesn't knock him out, but uh, certainly uh, certainly does do uh, does do a pretty hefty blow in the moments. Uh, next on the list, Hoda, it's round to you. Um. Hoda is going to um, attempt to, like, uh, knock the knees of the one next to him with his spear. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Uh, Sixteen? Sixteen, yeah, for, for five. Uh, and as he has four hit points left to this his name on this radio, uh, you will be able to... Uh, uh, knock him down in the moments as this knock is all about via knees. <laughs> knock him out via knees. I think you. I think the way you is is you swipe the knees out so badly. It unless you're going for lethal, uh, that would be. Oh uh, no! It would. Uh, it literally. It would be knock the knees out. So you probably hear like a bit of a crunch from like the bones cracking, yeah. which is my kind of shtick. But then, like, as he goes down um, across the way, Baldor just sees this, like, smug look um, from Hoda as uh, he's the one who ta he's taken him down. So uh, your next turn will start uh, with a very smug look from your brother across the way. Fair enough, fair enough. And speaking of that, we uh, come through to the next on the list, which will be Baldor. Yeah, so... Uh... He, he, uh, he sees that and like while he has like his, his ex on his axe on his side uh, like he's really like more of a brawler so 
like he jumps up, runs in, and just like tries to uppercut the the one, this one. The no guy, problem. Uh, On that side, else? go for the uppercut. I think this is the one. God, I'm rolling terribly. Oh, okay. yep, yep, no, yep. Uh, 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 maybe the, with slightly too much mead in his system, uh, he, uh, yeah, he will, he will miss in the moment. Yeah. And yeah, you don't know where this the, the voice comes from, but you just hear so sloppy. <laughs> and uh, on with that, we move on to the next one, which will be uh, one of these raiders, I believe. It is their turn, and they will attempt to attack Karolf and see how they're going to get on. And uh, let's see what what he does in the moment. And a ten. This one will be uh, pretty pretty useless in the moment. Uh, bringing us to the other one who will attempt to do the same thing. Let's see how he's going to do. And we're the 17 for 7 this time, so he will catch we will catch him much more with that one. Okay, so yeah. Rolf is definitely taking some uh taking some hits, but uh is still ticking at the moment. And that one is out of the equation, so we are moving straight to Isa. Uh, Zisa sees these two attacking and doesn't react as quickly, mostly because usually Rolf would not be hit by such blows. Mm -hmm. um, from yeah, he definitely what seems to have got caught off and, guard, yes. Yeah, but she sees this and one stabs him, the other one stabs him. Um, Balder, you see her um, reach into her sleeve and take out a, a tiny chunk of, it looks like meat, but it's slightly green and she um pops it in her mouth and then she strokes down her throat where you see a tattoo she gulps once and goes Bleh. and she's going to cash uh cast tasha's caustic brew Oof. um at both of these schmucks damn okay well, they take two acid damage, but it stays on them for the duration. Okay, fair enough. Well, let's see. We'll do two deck saves in the moment. Let's see how they're going to do. Uh, first That's one does save. pretty well. Second one is a That's massive a fail. fail on that one. Okay. So the s second one is going to have that on them for the duration and will continue to take damage um, until they take a turn to scrape it off. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. That is all good. That is... I think the other one doesn't, uh, to my knowledge, take any damage. It might be a saber sock. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Well, have have a look and see what you can find, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see how uh, how that all. Uh, yeah, all plays no mention on. on a on on half damage on a on a success. So the other one is covered in acid. The one I think directly in front of me is not. Maybe he ducked out of the way in time. No His problem. Buddy got the brunt of it. Uh, no problem. Uh, uh, Aaron, um, one 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 of them that some of you have uh, have already uh, met before as well. Uh, he is from the same clan as them, and he is like shocked in the moments and is running up and will be attempting to try and grapple one of these and see how he does. And obviously, he will have to pull out the space afterwards. So we'll see how he does. Uh, checks and. This guy's mustache is glorious, by the way. <laughs> he does. He does have a glorious, uh, glorious mustache in the moment. Uh, so he's going to attempt to grapple this one. Let's see how he's going to do. Uh, da -da -da. Let's see uh, on that one. He will be able to grapple and be able to pull this one back over this way, and the, he will be officially grappled. Okay. What are you doing, you fool? Uh, as this is all going on. And that is officially him done. Uh, uh, Scopey will be uh, watching on as this is all going on, and he will uh, he will have no qualms in going up and bashing the other one on the head, and we'll miss. <laughs> and he's like, "Whoops!" Uh, as with a lot of these on, on that one. So fair enough. Uh, level one, level one, uh, bringing us to Rolf's turn. Rolf's turn in the moments. He will be able to uh, turn on this one and he's like, you traitors! 
And he will... Do, do, do. I think he's going to Warhammer, I think. Let's see how he's going to do uh, on that one. A 12 on a Raider is enough and does does 9 damage in the moment uh, on that one. Uh, and then will, I believe, multi attack. Mm. Uh, and in, with, with two strong swipes and two strong attacks, he uh, he literally uh, takes this guy out in in two moves, and just sort of lets out a sort of a roar of um, of anger as this is all all kind of going on in the moment. As he sort of looks around and he uh, says, "One left, get him." Does he kill him? Uh, yeah, he he literally took that guy out. Yeah, in in moments. Yeah, yeah. You don't you don't traitor uh, the captain of a ship yeah, in the, in the moment. Uh, bringing us to the bottom end of the turn order. Uh, Frida, you're last up. Um, One of these guys left. These guys at the bottom don't seem to be going to come up right uh the way this is playing out is that uh people are starting to notice and the idea is if yeah if this was continuing on for three rounds the rest would be involved but uh we're not uh this is all happening in in moments and seconds so yes it's uh it looks like it's they're not they are noticing but they're going to be slower to react than the rest of you is the way it plays out uh okay um i don't think uh frida would kill is, I don't I don't think she would so she'd just uh, non-lethally try and I suppose punch this guy I don't think she'd use her axe okay um, yeah. then so make, so, make a so just be a punch against this one that's grappled the five just uh, to try and knock him out okay yeah fair enough yeah he's still standing after the uh, after yep. the first one no, no, well, I don't have another. No, yep, yep, uh, you, yep. Fair, fair point. <laughs> it's, it's early days, guys. Yeah, it's early days. I keep forgetting myself. Um, bring us back to the top of the turn order. Rowder, round to you. Uh, Rowder will swing around and just bring the great axe straight down. Uh, there's an additional two damage for the rage. Okay, fair enough. Uh, he had seven hit points. Um, is that lethal or non-lethal? I'm assuming it's... Oh, lethal, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Looks like it already added the two damage, yeah, I think. the rage is... Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, it, 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 she had less hit points than, uh, than, the, than that anyway. Hopefully, if it did do the extra, that's great uh, on that front. Uh, let's have a look at the... Yeah, yeah, there's an extra plus oh, two oh. on that uh, on that damage. So, yeah, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty good. So, there you go. Uh, yeah, as the last of... These guys, two dead for certain, and one that's been uh, been knocked out would be the uh, uh, the best way of uh, of putting it right now. Um, but yes, you are uh, the you will be coming out of the uh, the combat, and um, as this is all going on, um, uh, Ruff, what the hell was all that about? I don't know. Is one of them still alive? They were talking to you, and they talking. So that was really well. <laughs> they were they were asking questions about how long before we would arrive, but yeah, then one of them just pulled a blade on me, and yeah, he's, he's he is incredibly pissed off, uh, pissed off with all of this. Is probably the best Do we way know of putting it. Clan they've come from? Uh, they yes, any... they would be the same clan as this guy, uh, Clan Tavar, uh, is the uh, the clan oh. that they're uh, they're on in the, on that one. Is the last one of them still alive? Uh, as they sort of looking yeah. at uh, Hodor and uh, uh, as this is going on. Yeah. Uh, Shall I put him down now? <laughs> yeah, we'll try and wake him up. Anyone can bring him round for questions. I before we chuck him over the side. You oh, never. No yeah, you never ever break the oath on a ship. And uh, yeah, he seems to be looking around. Like, is there any? Uh, is there any anyone else that's uh, sort of questioning him in the moment? And he does give a hard look to Aaron, uh, uh, looking over at uh, him, basically because he's on the same clan. And they they stare eye to eye at uh, uh, at each other. And he just says, "I don't know what was going on with them. I barely knew them, sir." And um, he sort of looks at him and nods in the moment for a, for a little bit, but uh, he he takes that for now. 
and we've been uh, on the sea for so long maybe they just lost their senses well let's see if uh, can anyone bring that one round and we ask him questions like, or we gotta sh wait shaking him about <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, it uh, it will take a while if you've got nothing that you're gonna offer up to try and bring him round. Let's put it that way. Right. Can uh, I find a bucket on on the ship and get some water and chuck it over his face? Uh, uh, absolutely, absolutely. It'd be freezing cold. cold. I imagine. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Fair enough. I think for expediency, say, I'm I'm gonna let that uh, I'm gonna let that uh, let that have the effect as he sort of uh, he sort of comes what? around. Everyone's faffing with getting this guy up. Um, uh, because Hoda's is a little freak, uh, he will rip a tooth out of the dead one next to him and just pop it in his pocket. Fair he enough. Likes fair bones. Enough. Do you then chuck the uh, the, do the? Does the body then go over the side or? Uh... Uh, if someone else moves it, he's not going to be able to lift the body, but mm. he just wants the tooth. Yeah, Fr Frida would, after doing the bucket, would oh. try and help clean up as much. Just the situation. a question: If we would. Would throwing bodies overboard attract any unwanted, like, sea creatures? Possibly. To us. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, you know there are serpents in the seas. You know that much. Uh, that's certainly true. It's We're traveling right there in the name. But you are moving. Yeah, you aren't, you're not stationary. Yeah, that is that is also true. Yes, yeah, so if we keep them on board as well, they're going to uh, attract other stuff too. And smell. Exactly. Fair enough. Fair enough. So it sounds like yeah, you guys do chuck the uh, chuck the other two over the uh, over the sides as this is all going on, and um, yeah, you guys will um, wake that guy up and uh, basically uh, the way it kind of plays out for a little bit is is um, he's very uh, he's being very very stubborn, shall we say, uh, is the best way of putting it. Uh, as well, this is all during going on. during that, can Zisa put a hand on? Rolf's shoulder and say, can I speak to him? If you think you can get anything out of him, Isa, yeah, sure. So Zisa will uh, walk up to this dude, um, grip the um, crystal that she has around her neck, and just look at him and cast Charm Person. Okay. He attempts to spit in your face as you as he, as he thinks you're casting something. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you go yeah uh, you go for it in the moments as that's going on. Uh, right, one second. So we are going for a save. We're going to go for a wisdom. Uh, <laughs> uh, as this uh, as this goes on, then yeah, he looks to go to try, and then the eyes sort of glaze over uh, as uh, as this is going on. She she reaches out and uh, uh, caresses his cheek, and her demeanor completely changes she's been standing pretty tall uh shoulders um back um but now she softens her stance a little bit to become much more feminine and much more alluring and she just says raider why have you decided to turn on our leader do you think you could do better do you think you're stronger do you think you're more capable do you think that you are a better man than Hrolf? Why would you turn on him so? Well, we, we, were, we were paid to. I, I remember we were paid to. It was a lot you of received, coin. Was you received good coin. Money. Yeah. Who provided you your payment? Was it a lot? Uh, enough for a long time of, of drinking, yeah. But it kept us going through the hard winter for a long, long while. I... Winters can be quite cruel. Who hates you? And he, and that's when the confusion sets in on his face, and he looks. I. I don't. I don't know. Um, I. I know I was paid. And he starts to rub his temples as this is going on. And Do you have the coin that you were paid? It's not on the ship. Where did I put it? And yeah, he's starting to get very confused in the 
in the moments as this is all as, as this is all going on. Were you the only one that received this payment, uh, 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 other than the two that you attacked with? Are there any others on this ship? Perhaps this gentleman, and she points to this guy. Uh, to <laughs> points to Aaron in the in the moments he he's like whoa as uh, as this is all uh, all going on in the moment, and uh, he the uh, the raider guy that says uh, we had. We were paid, and it was so... It was... And, and you start to see their, their, uh, like they're choking on blood, and it starts to pour out of their mouth, Conrad, in the moment, and he, start, he, he collapses in front of you. And uh, Aaron next to you just goes, Jesus, what did you do? Zisa, Zisa stands back up to her usual um, posture, turns to Rolf and says, he's been magically influenced to do what he did, whether he already had it in his heart and someone played on that or it was planted there, I can't speak to. What I can say is that most like he also was influenced to not reveal who it was that paid him on the pain of death, it would seem. Is that... Is that your kinds of magic? Do, could you have done that to him? She looks at him and thinks and says, Is it you? Not yet. I could... probably learn such... magics, if I needed it. If you needed it. And he he nods. He, he, he accepts on that one and say. Listen up, everyone. You all know that there are magic users in this world, and some of them have some horrible powers. What Zisa is just working out now is that there must be one that is wanting us to fail in this mission, and they have clearly been able to stow people aboard this ship in ways that I didn't realize, and... That is obviously troubling, but it also means that we must be on the right path. Understand we are close now. We are, we, we are hardy, we are raiders, we are the people that make it through the Serpent Seas where uh, the Bandur and the others are just weak. These men were weak, and but we prevail. And he sort of, uh, yeah, he... Uh, he again sort of uh, looks around at you all and uh, says, I am sure now everyone rest. We, I'm sure we will be hitting land soon enough. And uh, yeah, so uh, at this uh, at this point, it seems, uh, yeah, one more body is, if no one stops it, gets will be thrown over, thrown over the side, uh, as with the other two that have been previously, uh, uh, previously done as this is going on. And you guys Zisa will make ritually way. cast um, detect magic. Uh, 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 just generally across the ship. Fair enough on that yeah, one. Yeah, and, and and so she would just so while Rolf was giving this speech, um, Zisa, um, without like turning away or anything like that, suddenly you see her eyes roll in the back of her head, and she starts um, chanting under her breath, um, which is her way of ritually casting it. So once he's done. Um, her eyes will um, fly back to normal, but there'll be um, a bright amber. And she's just going to walk the length of the ship to see if there's anything magically out of the ordinary. No worries, no paying, problem. Paying no attention to anybody who does not give off anything suspicious. So no regardless worries. of how she's being viewed or looked at or spoken to, she's just walking to the back, turning around, and then walking back to the front. No worries, no worries as this is all uh, all going on. Uh, does anyone have any magical items or any uh, ma magical things on them at this point? I would be surprised, but uh, yeah, if you do, speak up, obviously, because uh, uh, Zisa would actually know in the moment, if that makes sense. Uh, well, I yeah, have my, um... my... Go on. 
Oh, go ahead. I was gonna make a joke. It's not. Oh, <laughs> so was I. I was gonna say, just my left blade is right here. So. Ah, yes, yes, yeah, yeah. Your three wishes. What yes. Was, what enough. was your What was your joke then? <laughs> I, I was gonna go with plus three battle axe, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh no, fair I, enough. Fair I, enough. A druidic focus won't give off any energy, will it? I'm just double checking. Mm. On that. No, that's just something no, you no. use yeah. to cast. Yeah, that's like that's like my that's like my crystal. I was gonna ask: Is does my emblem count? I don't think it does. No, fair enough. I think it's yeah. used for casting. Yeah. Balder, so, before going to sleep, will say, "Does anyone have any of that meat left over?" There will be there will be a little bit left uh, that uh, yeah, Harolf will be able to uh, offer up uh, when the uh, uh, if if and when you do ask. He's usually been very fairly favourable on uh, on drinking with you. Uh, would probably be the best way of putting it as well. I mean, uh, it's just a nightcap, right? <laughs> of course, of course. And uh, yeah, uh, yeah. See, so, so you do, uh, you do do the up and down of the uh, of the ship uh, as this goes on. Um, yeah, nothing to really detect in the, as as you do. The ship seems uh, seems mundane. It, uh, it doesn't appear to be any hidden magical uh, magical things going on as this is uh, uh, going on. But you take that as probably a good sign uh, overall. Yeah, I just I just give Rolf a, a quick shake of the head when I get back. Uh, yeah, he, he nods on that one, on that one. Are there magics that could track us easily if there are not spies aboard? My, this there is not my forte. There are magics that can do many things. Mm. To view us from afar, to listen to our conversations. It is possible, yes. Hmm. Well, I had enough problems with the seers being able to tell things, let alone uh, others, but um, I honestly take this probably as a good sign. If others want us stopped, then there is a chance we're on the right, uh, on the right way. Get some rest. And, uh, yeah, you guys will uh, basically... Um, take a uh, take a rest for the evening through uh you will be able to gain the benefits of a long rest on the ship uh, that is, that is something you've managed to figure out with time nice so, uh, for Rolf. Uh, hi I, I notice things i noticed you seemingly can move very fast when it comes to people falling overboard and naturally so some might say yeah i some say I have a gift, yeah. How come that worked f for you there, but you didn't see those guards come in to attack you? <laughs> I wish I knew. There is more... There's more to this than I can possibly understand. Gods work in mysterious ways, after all. Mm. Okay. Keep your secrets. Hmm. Uh, and I just wander off and uh, have a sleep, I guess. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, uh, he sort like of, he sort of, yeah, it, yeah, fair enough. Yeah, no, her all sort of uh, eyes you as you, as you, as, as you wander off and, and on that one sort of uh, uh, just, just, yeah, quietly, quietly uh, watches you as you, uh, as you head off uh, back to, back to the space as that goes on. It is the next morning when land mm. is kind of spotted. Go ahead. I'm, I must roll a d20 every time I sleep. Fair enough. Go ahead. I am safe this night. Okay, fair enough. That's not uh, not, not oh, concerning. That's, that's all with it. Yeah, um, that's peculiar. Okay. <laughs> Uh, as this is all going on, but yes, uh, what we will have is is that yes, the, you guys will be able to take your long rest, no problems. And um, yeah, the next morning, uh, land is sighted, and um, it is a very lava rocky coastline that, um, that that appears before you all, and the sight of a very 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 strange place would be the. Uh, the next thing on the list as uh, I will bring it into view for you all as a strange um, tower of of sorts can be seen on the uh, on the horizon and uh, 
yeah, your little your little ship compared to it will be starting to pull up uh, nearby, and you guys will be sort of slowly but surely uh, making your way out onto onto the beach uh, on on the See actual like. on the actual side of this uh, rocky sort of lava rock space uh, as this is all kind of going on, and her well, like is just Iron sort of taking is, it uh, in. Going ba- bananas because obviously. She's been cooped up on this ship. Oh, yeah. The, 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 the feeling of actually being finally being able to be free of, of that kind of thing is, uh, is definitely going to be, uh, definitely going to be true. But yeah, you guys are the crew start to slowly, but surely are starting to make a quick encampment, uh, as all this is going on. And, uh, yeah, we, uh, will take a very, very quick break for a quick drink and then we will return, uh, for dealing with whatever this tower is as this is going on. All right, everyone. So, yeah, we are back then. Uh, our party have made their way onto the beach and they have uh, have properly landed. Uh, some of the uh, crew are now starting to bring out a few supplies and tie the ship down uh, along with the other one that uh, uh, sails up uh, very, fairly swiftly behind you. As you guys have been taking in the view of that uh, giant tower not far off and uh, uh, Harolf is basically saying... What did I say? They're never wrong. There it is. Looks kind of creepy. <laughs> he says in the moment. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's it's really, really odd. It's like this tower that has been like partially submerged in, uh, in sharp black lava rock uh, that seems to coat most of the beach as this is going on. Uh, there seems to be about uh, 60 feet of the building that still rises above. Um, but it's like no structure any of you have ever seen. You're used to like Viking longhouses and things like that. This is way out of left field compared to uh, compared to uh, most of you uh, on that one. Apart from um, Frida, you have vague memories of stone buildings in your in your past. But uh, yeah, it's very still vague. yeah very vague <laughs> indeed. But, but yeah, but even so, yeah, it, it, this is still very uh, even at left field for even. Uh, 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 left, left field for even that. Uh, there appears to be some uh, windows on an upper level, but uh, it's hard to very determine. Um, possibly some sort of a balcony uh, that seems to be full of rubber, rubble. There is a large sort of um, gash in the southern wall uh, with rock and debris, debris that seem to be flowing uh, into, into the tower. Uh, otherwise, the lava field extends to the south and to the east, uh, with hills far off in the distance in in, a, in that direction. There's a trace of snow on the wind, but the ground itself is warm enough, and it melts shortly after falling as this is all going on. Um, Rolf says, uh, most of the men need to, uh, need to make sure that uh, the boats are secured, but... Um, I'm assuming most of you will be with me, as he's looking around at, uh, at your group, and uh, then... Uh, uh, he also uh, will uh, ask for Aaron and Scopy to also uh, join you guys uh, as this is all going on, as he lets others um, start to uh, mount off the the ships and start preparing a camp as this is all going on. Who would build something so big? Yeah. Hopefully wasteful. Horrible, horrible shape as well. It's got none of the, none of the signs of home. I don't recognize any of it. What is even the roof made out of? The roof is made out of some sort of stone. Very strange. Very strange. And uh, yeah, he's definitely, uh, yeah, he's definitely very, uh, very surprised by uh, by that uh, as this is all going on. But yeah, you guys slowly but surely uh, will start making your way towards the tower, and we will go to the next map. Uh, I'm assuming, Jamie, in this case, that your um, your wolf will be kind of. We'll, we'll say it's alongside, if that makes sense. You're not leaving yeah, it behind yeah. at the ship, is what I'm getting at. No, 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 no. No, it would be definitely be uh, definitely be with you uh, as this is all going on. Uh, yeah, you can see the large tower up ahead, and um, yeah, you can already um, start to see that there is some sort of a, 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 a crack or a space in one side of the. And in one side of the building, uh, a bit further down, as you guys get closer to this ginormous building, I mean, this is it. This this dwarfs even kind of like the largest of the long halls that are in Holwick, and they are some 
they're quite large. Some of those are pretty large buildings uh, back there on that front. But yeah, this is very different in construction uh, as all uh, as all that's kind of going on. Uh, Harolf will start leading you guys forward, and uh, there seems to be some sort of an entrance. Keep up, keep up, uh, as the rest of them will be following up uh, as this is all uh, all going on. Um, but yes, you definitely uh, are able to spot a um, quite a large hole on the on the side of the uh, uh, side of the building here, uh, as the the ones that are sort of up front as this is going on can um, can Blythe and Rowder uh, give me a perception check as you're sort of the, the first getting towards that goal as that's going on. Now, yeah, as you guys are getting close and you uh, make uh, make the initial protection checks as this is uh, going on, um, Blythe, you kind of think um, it kind of looks like someone has had a, a... Although there's a lot of debris that's going on here and with, with some of this, uh, you definitely do think that, um, that someone um, may well have done a little bit of excavating to try and get into the, get into the space as, uh, as this is all sort of going on. Be careful, it looks like somebody's actually got in here somewhere. Um, you can see a dim glow on the inside of the space as well, which is kind of strange. There's something glowing inside. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, so uh, you guys, well, Harolf won't, won't be hanging about. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. He will definitely be uh, making his way in uh, inside as this is going on and start and looking I'm, around. I'm right behind him. No problem. Are no. we sure it is safe? Perhaps one of us should go ahead and check. Well, we're all in here. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, he's literally saying that, and he's as he's two steps behind. I like that. We'll we'll, we'll take that in the uh, in the moment uh, as as all this is uh, going on. Uh, you are following these other raiders in, and um, yeah, you threw this crack into the tower. Uh, the room has sunk about five feet below the ground outside. There are several strange orbs that emit faint flickering light, and there are numerous fragments of other orbs that are around in the same space. Uh, it looks like as if someone had tried to attempt to remove a couple of them, but had no luck as this was all going on. There's also a uh, fair bit of small and medium-sized black rock that seems to be covering the floor and seems to have blown in from outside. A few of the inner walls seem to have collapsed in this space uh, as, as you're kind of uh, looking around, um, blocking a couple of the doorways from what you can see. And uh, Harolf is sort of uh, looking over and, uh, yeah, there definitely looks like there's a doorway of some description buried under here if, uh, from what I can see. Um, uh, yeah, and he, he starts sort of um, calling for Aaron and... Uh, and Scopy to come and start helping with uh, with t starting to move some of this rock. It's heavy stuff. There seems to be a lot of it. This uh, this appears to be like this would uh, this will take a while. But they says there's definitely something beyond um, this. Whilst they're doing that, mm -hmm. um, I would like to uh, sleight of hand uh, mold earth to sort of move make it easier for them moving the rubble away uh, so it fair enough i don't think it can work on works stone as far as i'm uh, aware it does but say or, or stone worked stone i think there might be some rules on, oh, on yeah, earth it might uh, be natural i can't i can't remember on uh, there was some reason why why my my mold it earth doesn't there. They, it just says stone on the description on D and D Beyond. Fair yeah, enough. I, I know you can't get into like I, castles and stuff like that, you know. Yeah, yeah. but it's because it's loot. I think if that. I don't know if that means because it's sort of if it's packed in. Yeah, I'm gonna. So, like, I'm, I'm, gonna I'm, I'm gonna. I'm gonna that. roll it. The, it does start to look like, and you, did you see some of this is starting to shift um, as this is going on? But there's a lot of work stuff in amongst all of this, so I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say it's it's slow going, but it does. Uh, kind of, uh, kind of help uh, as uh, as this is all going on. Meanwhile, Baldor, you're over in the corner of the room uh, as this is all sort of going on. Uh, and from where you are right now, um, I'm going to need a um, just a sort of a, an investigation check from you, just from sort of being in the general area you're in. Yeah, I'm just like 
walking around kicking some rocks, not really paying attention to, to the, what the rest is. Uh, <laughs> Fair enough. But you have gone to this point. You have gone. You are the first of the, the area you're in. Yes. Uh, I'm not good at this. I'm not a smart man. Okay, fair enough. 16 is respectable, it, though. It is definitely respectable uh, as this is going on. Um, what you're finding is you're sort of kicking uh, kicking some of these this dirt out of the way and you suddenly hear it go clack, 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 as it sort of seems to fall down to a floor below uh, and, a, and, a, and a small hole appears underfoot as you're sort of, uh, as you're kicking some of this dirt around in the moment. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I believe I have found the entrance to the tower. And it, um, most of these people look <laughs> round at you in the moment. <laughs> what you found, Baldur? My my genius has uncovered this hidden room. I believe this will lead us further into the tower, much faster than whatever you guys were doing there with like the stone and the rubble. And I says, well, okay, you, you, some of these guys continue on trying to get through this, figure out this door here in the rubble here. Why don't you guys start pulling up and taking a look? As he sort of yells over in the moments. And uh, I imagine Baldor starts to, starts to, yeah, uh, starts to clear with Frida's help as this is going on. And there is, there is another floor about 20, 20 ish to 30 feet below. Uh, yeah, there is a, hole there and as you start to clear more out you can more collapses around away and there appears to be a uh, appears to be a way down uh, there's certainly uh uh it's dark down there in the moment but it's certainly uh yeah there certainly is something down there but how would you guys proceed i suppose will be the question is the floor viewable uh, it's certainly is the floor lava the floor definitely isn't lava. There is it is pretty dark, but there are there is faint flickering light that can be seen. Um yeah, there's definitely a floor there and it seems to be solid from what you can see. Distance? Uh about twenty five feet down. So there's like slap um not Seb. She carries her name Seb. Baldur. <laughs> oh Baldur. Slap her on the back and go. Well, you found it. And sort of just gesture down the hole. After you. Oh, I... I am not... Uh, well, while while I am very brave, and I would definitely be the uh, best person I jumped down. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, bear with me two seconds. I will give you your teleport one second. Uh, Hopefully the teleports are still working. As I give you, I'll give you the arrow and you can jump in as oh, you see arrow. fit. Oh, look at that. There we go. As he as he jumps down, uh, Baldor following fa fairly swiftly after in the moment. I, you... I, I'm, yeah, I didn't want to go that soon. Peer like... pressure. <laughs> Uh, fair enough. If oh, everyone else wants to, uh, if everyone else wants to jump down, just so we can uh, see the scene a little yeah, easier, yeah. I think that would be uh, will be handy. Uh, so. Does Harolf tell Zisa to go with them? Yeah, yeah. He, he he will he will sort of nod and he said, "I'll keep these guys working here, but yeah, keep with say. them." And without any hesitation, she goes. Is Zisa a Wicca person? Mm -hmm. You don't know. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Uh, as this is going on, um, I just realized <laughs> you guys have jumped down into a large, unnatural cavern about um, about 20, 20 feet wide in radius, and it opens up around you. The only obvious exit is a tall hallway on the uh, on the west. There seems to be uh, some sort of a space over on that side. Uh, beyond it, there is the sound of squealing. Uh, of dozens, if not hundreds, of um, of creatures, the sounds of squealing of cre of small creatures seems to be something you can hear coming through the walls in this space as you're down here. A um, little disconcerting. Right, piglet squeals. 
No, Ask. no, more, much, no. much smaller than that. Uh, but, but lots and lots of uh, smaller than piglets. Smaller oh. than piglets uh, on that one. No, uh, <laughs> some of some of you would go with the idea of the sounds of rats. Mm. Oh, cute. Gotta love them little rats. Um, Zisa was doing this upstairs. She'll do it down here too. Can she make a, like an Arcana check on these orbs just to kind of see how they work? Absolutely, absolutely, no problem. Uh, make an arcana check. Uh, an 11. I mean, they're clearly um, bewitched and magical in because they are they are obviously doing some sort of uh, continual flame magic of some description. Um, yeah, I mean, the fact that, that whatever this place is, you don't know how long it's been down, been here, but it's clearly been a while um so it is kind of interesting that these orbs are uh you know still lit in, in that respect clearly you know making sure it's magical but yeah you think continual flame is what the best your best thing you can think of um and, would also probably do an arcana check but wouldn't do it with these don't know her. <laughs> okay yeah fair enough yeah yeah go for it you can do an arcana as well uh, 24. 24. Uh, yeah, you think that they are, yeah, clearly magical in the thing, uh, but you also think that they they partly work because of the space they're in. You don't think, unlike uh, like others, you don't think these would work while, once they were removed from this place, if that makes sense. You're pretty sure that you're onto, onto something, that something magical about this place is powering them uh, overall. Uh, yeah, Hoda wouldn't say that. To anyone. No, no, this is what, yeah, but this is what he's getting in the, uh, yeah, in the yeah. moment uh, as this is going on. And, uh, Are there any, like, tracks or anything? Uh, uh, you can make a survival check, absolutely. My knee jerk reaction to give you guidance as Espen just kicked in. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough uh, on that one. Uh, Yes, there are tracks, but only animal tracks. And uh, it kind of goes with your feelings of, um, uh, yeah, of, of, of rats and mice is, uh, is the honest truth. And lots of Doesn't them. Doesn't look like any raiding parties have been here. Just, just seems to be rats. Correct. It just does seem like animals uh, as, this is, uh, as this is all sort of going on. Um, yeah, um, anything else you guys get up to? I, I recommend um, reading your weapons, if you will. Uh, Against rats? <laughs> it might not just be rats, that's what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Is anyone else, while those, the magic users are doing their, uh, their thing, was anyone trying to investigate the space or anything like that? Or was it, was it more they were heading oh, for the uh, door? Uh, she might have had a general look around, okay. not looking for anything in particular. In particular but I she guess. would, but she would, she would, she would have actually been looking uh, on that yeah. front. Uh, okay, yeah. Give me a. You can give me a general investigation check of the uh, of the room. Oof. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, yeah. The only thing you do find there is uh, in amongst the stuff here, you do spot one round wooden shield um, that seems like that might be functional. And does anyone need a shield? I have a shield, but thank you. Anyone else? Oda just shakes his head. <laughs> I also have a shield. Shield just nothing wrong nice, with the one I've got. Nicely against the wall, then. You should just leave it there. Mm -hmm. Is there an emblem on the shield or anything? No, but the shape is strange. Um, the fact that it's not round is is beyond bizarre. Um, would definitely be the, the be the be the token of it. You've never oh, seen God, sort of uh, shaped, angled um, shields, if that makes sense. Not Does seen this look like, like it that. would have come from like the western shores, or the eastern stretch, or the high north, or anything like that? Mm, no, not the, not that you uh, that, that you think of that one. You've never seen anything like that, if that makes sense. I suppose that is functional, but not of a kind of shield I have ever seen. Wouldn't work very well with my fighting style. Fair enough. Um, but All yeah. those angles would just get in the way, surely. Yes, it is. It is not a very practical shape for a shield. 
Fair, fair. Okay, yeah, yeah, but um, uh, Rowdy, yeah, you do seem to be making your way towards uh, what seems to be the only door. It seems like a proper door uh, as you're as you're looking there. I will try the door. No problem. Uh, as you do, uh, the door will open. No problem. Uh, as this is going on, revealing uh, on the other side a a irregularly shaped room uh, that seems to have. Um, more doors off to the uh, uh, to the actual sort of uh, north end of things here, and also off uh, to the far end. Uh, another another one off and going to the north. Uh, it seems like there are shelves full of broken broken jars and shredded baskets. Uh, the room is um, is dank, uh, has a sort of a slightly festering odor to it and there are layers and layers of filth on on both the floors and the shelves uh and uh yeah you can still hear uh i think even more so as you guys sort of make your way in here uh the sound from over here of far more of that rat screeching seems to be uh uh seems to be going on uh as all that is going on um Zisa, as you make your way over to the tables over on that side, the jostle of the chair that the um, that is that is there is sort of it's slightly moved as something backs under the under the table further as uh, as that goes on. You hear a sort of screech and a. You all see Zisa go from being this like tall stoic figure to a very low crouch for her height and she immediately backs to here and uh can i see underneath the table absolutely yeah as you do uh what is revealed is a child uh underneath the uh the desk there is a a, a little face uh, she sort of uh looks out and she sort of uh looks at you and says, Hel hello? Lisa stands up to her height again and her head slightly tilts to the side and says, you are a child. That's not uh, a garden, is it? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she, she sort of looks quizzically on that one. And, and she says, did, did you, did you have to come past the rats? Uh, she sort of looks, um, sort of looking at you all, sort of quizzically as this is all going on. No, but how did you get down here? I've, Why are you down here? I've been, I've been stuck here for the last day or so. I, I, I don't know, I don't know what's been going on. I, I've just been trying to lay low and keep away from the rats. You're the first people I've seen, and. You're very strangely dressed. As <laughs> he sort of uh, sort of looks at you all in the in the moment on we, that one. Uh, we're all kind of like dressed pretty much exactly the same, right? Yeah. How's she dressed? You're, you're very. Uh, you're in very um, obviously raider esque styles. So yes, you're you're very very similar stuff going on there uh, on that one. Uh, um, um, very odd materials that she's wearing. Um, uh, 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 quite a um, uh, shall we say a, a deep sort of purple coloured dress of some description very strange look compared to uh what you guys are wearing as uh, as this is all going on and she just says um are you uh, uh is there a way, is uh, is there a way out now I, uh, I've, I didn't find a way out how did you get in oh how is, but, <clears throat> how is the how wolf is reacting to this feel sorry say again you know, like animals have like instincts. Uh, yeah, if you'll let me, if you let me play it in the moment, uh, I will say Blythe that um, uh, the your your wolf will um, sort of make its way over to her and sniff her for for a moment, and then uh, licks her face. Aww. Uh, she <laughs> seems okay. <laughs> she says, ah, "I haven't seen her dog in so long," and she sort of uh, she sort of uh, grabs around it for a moment and sort of gives it a gives it scritches like she's seen these that, things before that is not a dog that is what we have been told is a wolf a, a wolf is a dog 
they do like the same thing basically as the, but uh, it's neither here nor there it's okay um what but what, what I'm what? concerned with is why <laughs> how you know nobody else seems to know what uh what, what my companion is so I uh, there are dogs at home I yeah uh, I have I have one yeah. I like literally look around to everyone like see <laughs> and yeah she's basically just giving it scritches and uh all the all the dog petting kind of things that you would expect are kind of happening right now with her as she's where, sort of like where, smiling where about. is home for you are you from one of the bender kingdoms the what bender uh, sorry i don't know how to say that uh bender yes it's close bender. it's close yeah bender um she says uh, no i don't know what that i don't know what that is uh I'm from a I'm from a place um, on the on the on the coast sea a big big city um, uh, water deep uh, you, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah I don't know where this is compared though water it's been real deep? strain deep water is it a a, a raft town do you, mm, no. do you live in the sea no 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 Can no you no you breathe no. underwater to- child. Huh? <laughs> no, no, no. I, uh, I just, uh, I just live by the sea. I don't, uh, I didn't live on it. Um, what clan do you belong to? I, no. Um, I mean, my, uh, my father said he was part of a guild. Is that, is that kind of what you're, what you mean? He was part of the merchants' guild. No, I don't mean that at all. Okay. Child, you must have hit your head. This, this, you're making all this up. I'm not, I'm not. And she sort of, sort of, sort of stands up a bit bolt more uh, sort of upright in the moment. I was just playing outside. I lost sight of my friends for a little bit. Then there was a green swirl of light and then I was here. Can I arcana uh, check that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And Hoda would probably insight check as well, just to see if she's telling the truth. No problem. Yeah, you can definitely the insight check. with a dog, Blythe's content. Blythe. <laughs> uh, on that front. Uh, both of you got... Uh, well, your insight is pretty good on that one, so hang on. Let me uh, let me ro- roll a blind roll one second. Do, do, do. He's a devil. <laughs> <laughs> also, Hoda's is deliberately keeping distance because a lot of children cry when they see him. So he's trying to like be polite and <laughs> try yeah. and make sure the child doesn't burst into tears. Fair enough. I face. nearly cried when I saw you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as this is all, all going on, um, yeah, uh, you get the sense, Hoda, that she's telling the truth. Uh, as this is all going on, uh, from your point of view, Zisa, you are aware that people do arrive in this world from other places. It does happen. It is rare, but it does happen. Um, That's how some of the race, other races have gotten to this land. Um, You've never had it described to you before how they get here. So that's kind of a first, but for uh, for her to actually have any idea of how that happened is kind of unusual compared to what you've heard from others that just seem to have managed to wake up here on the shores or something like that. Uh, it's a little, it seems a little different, but it's not, it's not an, un, it's not an unfathomable idea, if that makes sense. You know, Dragonborn weren't a thing here until some started arriving, if that made sense, things like that. It's, uh, it is true. Half orcs are rare, but they have been here. It's that kind of thing. And everybody did arrive here originally, the very early settlers, the story is that they literally arrived um, via a portal uh, when the, for the very first raiders and etc. Yeah, Zisa nods slowly and says, "You are from elsewhere, not here. You came from there to here, like uh, the Dragonborn some years back. Oh. You were in another world." One that's different from your own. What? That is why you dress different and speak of things we don't know of. Another world? She's like kind of takes it, taking it in on that one. Uh, it sounds as if you were transported through a magic doorway of sorts, a portal, to this place. Yeah, yeah, wizards do that, don't they? And and, and Zisa kind of clocks that she 
didn't say that as if it was a slur. Not not at all. Not at all. Yeah. No. Um. There are magics that can achieve that. Yes. I, you uh, know, wizards. I I have seen some. Um. Yeah. Yeah. There's there's a few in the the, the city. Um. There's a tower full of them. Uh. But yeah, I, no, it's not kind of my normal thing. But uh, yeah. And that's kind of mind blowing to Zisa in, yeah. that, in some ways because that's a whole different ball game of stuff. Uh, and you see it like the way it registers with her is that she just kind of blinks twice, but like again, no real emotion. Mm. Um. Well, you are here now, and there is very little chance that you will ever return. You can travel with us. You can ride our boat back to perhaps Halharn, and make a new life for yourself. Well, anything sounds better than being uh, being stuck here. Um, I'm, I'd rather stay with you, yes. Uh, now, I'm... This place is very, very strange. I, yeah. I will stay with you. And she sort of uh, sort of uh, nods and uh, uh, looks at that as uh, things go on. Uh, congratulations, oh, guys. Yeah, at this moment, you have uh, uh, gained your first companion and companion action. Uh, so this person can... Uh, she uh, can be used as a companion action, and uh, she can administer first aid to an unconscious or dying creature if she is within five feet of it. So in Story Beats, it's that you guys say you want you want her to do this in the moment, uh, and you can have her do that on as if it was her turn. Uh, she can make a wisdom check, and if successful, she can stabilize them, giving them 1d4 hit points. Oh, so, uh, this nice. doesn't Ooh. bode well for the difficulty of this game. <laughs> where it's extremely hard to die as a character anyway, and they give you a companion to do this. Like... Is, this stuff is gonna happen. This is gonna be terrible. <laughs> uh, fair, fair enough. Uh, uh, as this is all going on, um, but uh, she says, um, "Yes." Uh, anyway, uh, I shall introduce myself. I am Sidi, and uh, y you all are. And uh, yeah, I'm assuming names are starting to give it be given out as the uh, as that goes on. Uh, Hodor, I think you would be last uh, as this is going on, as you're further away. But uh, yeah, she sort of looks to looks to you as uh, as this is uh, uh, as as things go on, and uh, and sort of looks at you politely, uh, waiting for uh, waiting for a name. Uh, you don't get the reaction you uh, you expect. She doesn't seem to be overly phased by you right now. She's a necromancer. She's lots of dead people. <laughs> <laughs> you could see he's like pleasantly surprised there's like a small smile when he realizes the child hasn't burst into tears <laughs> um and uh yeah and he'll he'll then uh, introduce himself after the bit of eye contact where the child doesn't cry and then he'll say that he's his name i like your hat Hi. Uh, and this is iron the dog jumping all over your oh. <laughs> yes, he sort of <laughs> he starts uh, she starts giving it more scratches and sort of uh, smiles uh, smiles at that uh, as this is going on and he's yours uh, yes you keep him safe uh, so she and ah. uh, she also keeps me safe oh I'm, it goes both ways and uh, yeah she's quite she's quite happy with that as uh, as this is going on uh, meanwhile, is there anyone else up to anything in all of this? I think once we've like invited her basically to come with us and Zisa provides a name, she's going to go back to what she was doing, which was looking at this table. And it's very awkward because she walks basically up to the child, looks at the table and just completely ignores her because she's back to doing what she was doing before. Fair enough. She doesn't seem to take any offense to any of it in the in the moment. You are strange folk after all. Um, yeah. As this is all uh, going on, then uh, you can uh, you can start making me an investigation check of the uh, of the table, etc. And is anyone else up to anything as all of this else um, is going on? Oh, Fre Frida would uh, let out a hand to help the child up. Um, Thank you. Just 
just stay with us for now. Do you know if your family have come here too? I don't know. I've not seen anyone since I arrived yesterday. I've just been trying to avoid the rats. I've not heard anyone. Maybe they're here somewhere. What, Must what be about here somewhere. Rat, rats aren't scary. Oh, there's a lot of rats. Rats make good a meal. I've not seen anything like them, though. They're weird. We weird how? Uh, they're not furry. I don't... They're not what I... Are uh, uh, rats not furry here? Are oh, rats not very? <laughs> uh, no, rats are normal <laughs> rats uh, uh, for, uh, from 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 uh, from anything like that. Uh, yeah, do I do I have I seen any furless type rats in my sort of this wilderness is, uh, adventures? Not not like what she's uh, not like what she's just suggested there. But she goes, she does point over to uh, I killed one of them, and she points out one a body of one uh, not too far off from you, Frida, as this is all going on. Oh, can I? What, what does it look like? It looks like a <laughs> carved piece of wood would be the best way of describing it, in the shape of a rat. I, I think you're going a bit crazy. This is just wood. No, you stabbed some no, wood. No, it moved. It really did move. There's lo there's lots of them. Like, Frida's looking around at like everyone being like, "What?" Uh, yeah. Hodor, you're you're coming to have a look at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can make me a history check in this case. Uh, Twenty. Um, it strikes you, although you have never seen this before. You do know that there are people that are called wickers, and they are, in theory, made of made of materials, made of wood. But you've never heard of animals being made like that. Um, they are partially myth and rumor, but uh, it is it is something. I'll give you Rowder, just because of your age and your time, you have met wicker people in your past. So you have you you know there are people that are of con construct kind of uh, kind of build. It tracks. I've uh, I've met people made of well, seemingly made of wood. It makes sense to be animals too. What? Oh yes, of course. Yes, of course. The wood people. Yes, I remember now. <laughs> I have. <laughs> Make a deception check. Uh, no problem. I'm, I'm glad you remember. Baldo. <laughs> nice. Yeah. How is this going to be like? Baldo, you slept through every history class we ever had as children. Uh, fair enough. Is anyone else doing anything else while this? Uh, uh, while the, while others were investigating the uh, yes. the wood. So I was looking at this table. I'll look at this one. Uh, no problem. Uh, you definitely can go for it. Make a make an investigation check. See how you do. Investigation. Mm. Oh, natural twenty. Nice. Oh, damn. Okay. I got wolf dice. Um, <coughs> you do have wolf dice right now on that one. Um, you find on that particular table there is some sort of strange um gem of some description that you don't understand. There are a bunch of minorly carved bones maybe like finger bones or something of the equivalent something along those lines and there appears to be three vials of black material or liquid in in vials that that's kind of strange can i get like some sort of nature reading off them or would it be more arcana uh it's not on arcana on this one um i don't think you've got any way of doing it there's not really uh there's not really books or writing so uh yeah it's just black vials of uh of, of material in uh, uh liquid form inside of a glass vial which is quite strange to have glass vials in, in the first place yes uh, yes i found some strange things would you like to see 
Yes. I, I walk over and... Um, I hand over the crystal and the vials. Okay. Uh, the vials, I would like to look at w using my expertise in um, uh, alchemy. No oh. problem. Um, mm, yes, you can uh, You can make a roll on that. If, uh, if Is there a tool in there or anything on that one with your expertise you can do? Um, I know that... Uh, in, in in newer books it says you could use like your expertise in tools to make certain checks um and i know identifying potions is one of them um when you have alchemy supplies okay as an exp as, as as a tool that you can use um and because of my background i always do this with advantage because nice. i my future is the maker so nice okay fair enough i've clicked the advantage button very nice but I didn't roll anything because it takes... I need to click more things. Hang on. That's okay. Expertise with advantage. Madness. <laughs> <laughs> that seems quite powerful, but that, then it has its specifics. Oh, I don't have any of those on me. So I'm just going to make an investigation because it's the same number. Sure, no problem. Hey, 24. the advantage is, uh, is good on that one. Um... The purest ink that you have ever come across in your times. You've had, you've, you certainly know of tattoo inks and bits and bobs like that, but this is the darkest, blackest, strongest ink that you have seen in your travels. In a perfectly, you wouldn't have the word for manufactured kind of vial, but in a, a very perfectly shaped, uh, doesn't look very handmade kind of vial would be the best way of putting it. This is ink, but the purest ink in the most perfect vial that I have ever seen. I would like to keep this. Vial? What is this? The small jar? That's a vial. Is it safe? Can you cut yourself on it? It seems dangerous. If I you am, were I... to break it, you could. I suppose. It's so thin. Yes. I'm going to keep these. And I, I put those in my pocket. <laughs> um, Fair and then, enough. And then I'll look at the, you said the crystal was the other one or the, or the gem? Yeah, I'll, I'll give you that with the with what's going on. Uh, that There's a moonstone gem. You believe, um, you, you've seen ones of that kind and and. Maybe not that quality, but you would imagine that's worth a fair few gold pieces. Uh, yeah, M many gold pieces, yeah. This gem is quite valuable. Maybe we could use it for more supplies. We'll be sure to let Rolf know. Uh, I, hand, I hand that back to you. It's probably a uh, satchel, backpack, <laughs> whatever I have. I turn to the girl, to the girl, and uh, I say, um, "Girl, have you found anything else around here, a value, or that might appear strange to you?" The uh, the arm on the on the top of the box is pretty weird. The, the arm, and uh, yeah, she sort of points to one corner, and uh, there is literally a. What looks like a metal arm um, on the top of a um, like a plinth of some description, um, sort of tucked off behind a, a couple of books on one side. Uh, not books, a couple of bits on one side. Sorry. Where is it? Sorry. Uh, it's a, it's like a small hand and a lower arm. It's on the table on the uh, on. Uh, oh, sorry, over on the. Over I think it is over on that. I have no idea. I rolled a one. Okay. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> It's very fair. That's that, that's the reason. We'll say Zisa walked over to start looking at something, and then uh, Blythe instantly called her away. That's why she missed it. Hey, don't blame my. Uh, the, the, my I'm not blaming you. My... I'm using <laughs> that to cover my dismal failure. But yeah. Isa, you were looking at this for like five, ten minutes. Nope, was not. Uh, so Hodo, yeah, you make your way over first uh, on that one. 
Um, very realistic looking arm uh, with a sort of a, an outstretched sort of palm, sort of in a sort of a in a half grip. It's not closed hand. It's sort of kind of open uh, as 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 you're looking at it. Nothing in the hand as you're looking at it. There's is there anything like a the equivalent of like a pen or a ruler? Those kind of stationary items on the desk. Um, like I'm gonna say, yeah, not specifically those, but yeah, there's there is this there is some items there that would be. Uh, there are some old sort of um, uh, what you call, you you'd say like coins. Um, uh, they certainly look like copper coins of some description uh, that 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 are there on the table. Well, um, I'd like to pick up one of the coins and kind of drop it into the open palm just to see what happens if something touches. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, no problem. Yeah, you put um, you put the uh, the coin into the hand. It instantly grabs it and goes tight around it. Okay, uh, this thing's weird. Don't touch the palm unless you want to, I guess, hold its hand forever. And, and you watch that. You watch the hand. Then it seems to drop, um, drop down and it, into the box below it, and then comes back up and then opens the palm, and the coin is gone. Uh, this is one of those little things where like the cat comes up (laughs) yeah you you catch on (laughs) it's so cute um... it it just stole your money should we destroy it is it enchanted if I were to be given 10 minutes I could find out I mean we've been here so long (laughs) I'm gonna. If there's any other small items that aren't coins, I want to see if it can tell the difference between what items are taking it. So, like, yeah, I don't know. Like there's screws. literally stones all over the floor. Yeah, I'll pick up a stone and I'll <laughs> drop it in the palm and see if the same thing happens or if it. Uh, yeah, you the see, stone. It, you see it grip it and then does it does the same motion and pops it into the into the box below it and then comes back up and opens up in this shiny silver and then stops. I mean, take it with you if you want it. I, we need. I, I do not uh, do think we need to be here anymore. Do we? I, I think. Uh, I think it's fine here. Um, I'll just put my money in a pouch. Just walks off because he's like, okay, cool. Is there anything else in the box? Uh, you don't know. Yeah, yeah. At this point. Well, I'm. I'm. A- I'm asking whoever's nearest. Ah. Yeah, Hodo. Yeah, you you can't see into the box that it's been putting things. It keeps coming up out of the hole and then back to the same position. Hodo's gonna turn, look over his shoulder, and go, "Baldor, uh, making things was my thing. Breaking things was yours. Come over there. <laughs> Just calls you over to smash it." Uh, I do not do this at your command. I just want. To smash something. I'm only stepping away because he knows like how much shrapnel this guy can produce from one hit. You have a very <laughs> strange relationship. Have it be noted that I do not do this skinny man-child's will. Here we go. But you wouldn't have done it had they not asked. Smash! So you are do. <laughs> Uh, you bring down the battle axe, and um, it, the uh, the hand will grab hold of the battle axe uh, <laughs> as you go <laughs> and grabs hold of the blade in the moment. And then oh, I no. need <laughs> you to do a contested a contested strength check as this is all. Oh my god! Right. I hope it takes away your battle axe. Uh, you can you can use hole. athletics. You can use athletics. Uh, oh, yeah. oh. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't the natural twenty as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no offense, Seb. We're all rooting against you. It's okay. Uh, no. On that one, oh. okay. Oh, it's me. You rolled as me. I rolled as you for some reason. Right. Uh, I have no strength. That's, no, that's not fair. Crazy. Unfair. Right. One second. Let's try that again. I'm pretty sure the box is more strength than me. Oh, 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 natural, oh, natural one. Um, so yeah, you managed to rip the um, uh, the uh, axe back out of its grip in that in that moment, Baldor. And then uh, do you continue trying to smash? Um, uh, you you will just hear weak from next to you. <laughs> yeah, I will continue trying to smash. Okay. What the fuck? 
Can, can I roll, it, uh, roll an attack again? Or Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Three uh, to, to Raudo and be like, this is going to be a long journey. This is. <laughs> <laughs> it really is. Um, Baldo, yeah. Um, for some reason, it doesn't seem to react this this next time as you as you as you bash down and you start to smash, and it doesn't it, it can't stop you. I, I'm assuming you continue for a little bit, and it does. Yeah, yeah. You start to slowly, over a few hits, um, you start to um, dismantle this thing in the moment and the box below it. And as you do, you see uh, three little green baubles drop out of the box uh, along and then you can also see a, uh, a coin and a stone alongside I'll sweep the baubles before he gets there <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna go go sw- as he's reeling back through with his axe you, you go you grab the uh, the three uh, the baubles, the yeah. baubles. Uh, yep. I'll take the coins and leave the rest I don't care about the rest just the coins no it problem to buy meat uh, no worries. So yeah, you uh, you definitely uh, do that. You look at the coins uh, in a moment, and um, yeah, you don't recognise any of the markings on them. That is, they're very very strange. Not even real. Um. Well, gold is gold. It'll spend. And City sort of looks at uh, you, Hoda, and sort of says, uh, "What are they? They look amazing." I'm not quite sure. Um, guess I'll have to look at them for a bit. Work that out. Okay, they look cool. And she, she's like, you can tell she was angling. Uh, but yeah, she doesn't say any more in the moment. Uh, Hoda won't give one to her, but he'll kind of like squat down and like gently like show it to her. Yeah, she'll be like... Oh. So, she, so she can look at the shiny. Yeah, can... absolutely. Absolutely. She will definitely... Uh, be interested in that uh, as that is going on. Uh, meanwhile, the rest of you over this side of the uh, building, uh, Frida, etc., are you guys making your way to the door yes. at this point? Yeah. Well, one of Frida's things is she is not scared of death, so she's not even going to listen to the door. She's just going to open it. <laughs> hey, me neither. Oh, God, we got two of you. <laughs> Nor me. <laughs> the, the YOLO vibes are there. No we, problem. We, she we... has accepted death. That's the thing. <laughs> So we got Team we Leroy Cal. Jenkins over here. <laughs> the Leroy Jenkins group. Uh, Maybe that's my last name. <laughs> Leroy Jenkins. Oh my god, my god. <laughs> Rauda Leroy Jenkins. Uh, <laughs> James, James, just to give you a heads up, I was uh, ritually casting Detect Magic while he was bashing this box over here so okay no problem no problem yeah so that that will be starting that will be start by. that will be starting to complete <laughs> no no it's, it's a little bit longer yeah. than that but yeah you're starting to go through that those motions uh, in the next room, uh, the odd room appears to be um, to have once been a staircase of some description. Um, but uh, for now, uh, what seems to be uh, going on is that the the arrows that I've got put up here, these are at least 20 to 25 feet above your head. Like the stairs are missing, if that makes sense. They're in, uh, they're in this sort of spot over here uh, as this is all going on. Um, um, but there is, uh, they seem to be dangling about 20 feet above your head um, as if someone had forgotten to finish building them. Uh, there is also a lever next to Blythe right now uh, on that wall. Uh, All right. As this is going on. And another door further, slightly further off. Uh, Rauda will just say to um, uh, Frida in Orkish. I dare you to pull the lever. Okay, while well, you two have stepped on these dots, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and she'll just pull the lever from where she's standing. Oh, uh, for God's sake. Okay, uh, fair enough. <laughs> uh, as this is going on, uh, on that one, uh, I need... Uh, <laughs> I need you all to make a dexterity acrobatics check for me, please, as uh, spears, multiple of them, coming up from the floor as uh, uh, as that lever is uh, first pulled in the moment. Wow. Damn, nice on that one. Oh, it's uh, just going to be me because I've got a plus Yeah, of course. Well, 15. Fuck. Uh, 15. 15. 
Uh, yeah, you make the you make the check as you're all uh, sort of diving uh, uh, through all of that as this is going on. As uh, uh, as no, all I of imagine these... Rauda just catches one without like, oh, even nice. looking. Yeah, and just drops like... it to the ground as if nothing had happened. Uh, nice, as this is all going on in the moment. Uh, oh, as yeah. uh, as you go. Uh, as you go through all of that, as, and and that all seems to happen in the moments as this is going on, can, and can I, are they sticking out the ground? Some are, some are. Can I break a couple off for makeshift javelins? Uh, uh, yes, I will certainly accept that. There's a couple of them that okay. seem sturdy yeah. enough. And what's happened in the moment is that there is now a ramp on this uh, on this sort of where the stairs were, uh, where there were no stairs. There's now a ramp. Uh, sort of leading up, it's not perfect for uh, for cli- uh, for getting all the way up, but it was, certainly looks more like it's climbable now than it was moments before. Before we go up, can I listen at this door? Because I assume it, it meets the rat door. Uh, absolutely, yeah. You can definitely hear the sounds of something on the other side uh, uh, of that blind. As this is all going on, yeah, more rats, lots of them uh, would be the best way Let's of putting it. Rats, as she was on a boat. So where there were stairs uh, higher up, they're all completely disappeared, and this is now a completely smooth ramp leading up all the way to the top. Very strange. Well, shall we? The guys we found uh, we uh, want to follow us. Uh, sorry, I'm just writing stuff in my character sheet. No problem. Goodbye. I teleported. How did you get up the little ramp? It's a ramp. Yeah, you have to climb. You do. You have to. You do have to climb. Uh, You have to make a. You have to make a strength. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, uh, you have to climb. It it is a uh, a dexterity strength check to uh, uh, sorry athletics to uh, make your way up. But you can certainly uh, certainly make an attempt. Oh, I don't. I don't know if I do it. Twelve. Uh, twelve, yeah, is it's the DC of a twelve, so you're uh, you are hey. you are good in the in the moments as this is all going on. Um, James, before oh. I go up, um, while they're outside doing that with the spears and stuff like that, um, if my detect magic has gone up, um, can I look at the the runic finger bones and the jars of ink to see if they're magical? Uh, fair enough. Uh, as this is all going on, um. No, neither of them are giving off any magical uh, effect uh, in the, in the moment as this is going on. However, all of the obviously the lights around the room are. Uh, even the hand that was doing odd things that would would be considered magic is now as in its final state, not not giving anything off. So apart from the lights, excuse me, right now, no, not much else is uh, seems to be uh, seems to be going on uh, as this is all going on. And can the Runic finger bones be used as um, material components for casting or anything like that? Or uh, yes, you do. I uh, you do think I'll give you this as just as a freebie. You do think they could be used for like um, uh, for casting like augury. Um, you, they, they're kind of components for that kind of thing. That's kind of handy. Um, that would certainly be a, certainly be useful at some point. Okay, I'll take those. Uh, maybe Rolf, Rolf will know what to do with them. Um, and then I will. Uh, Friedel will stand at the top of the ramp and help you two up, like place a hand out to help you pull you up, just to give you like the help action. No problem. Sure. Um, I'll take it. Help, uh, is the child the... coming with us? Uh, yeah, I would have probably like, uh, and the child, uh, as yes. I got up, kind of like patted the child to follow. No problem. Uh, she will definitely uh, want out from where from where she is, and you guys can uh, yeah follow up through the arrows. That's no problem. Do we need to? You said this was. Is it strength or dex or just strength? No, it's it's okay when you're getting help from someone else. Uh, that I'm um, that that that's negated, so it's not not a problem. Oh, cool. Thank okay. You. Yeah, I was about to say I wouldn't get up. <laughs> You'd just be watching me like it's a Takeshi's Castle thing, <laughs> struggling to get up. Okay, so yeah, as you guys make your way up uh, this sort of now smooth staircase that you made us up, uh, strangely, a green kind of carpet covers the stone floor at the top of these stairs. A hallway. Will- a hallway curves off to the south and west and you notice immediately that the orbs of light up here are much more radiant uh, and they seem to be yeah, stronger and brighter here, uh, less flickering than you've had in uh, in other rooms as uh, as this is going on. This is all looking Frida way, will, way um, brighter. We'll call out for Rolf. Mm, no, no moments, nothing in the moments as this is going on. 
Although you know you've come back up a level, so you should be on the yeah. same level as that's, they that's are. That's what I was kind of thinking. Uh, uh, meanwhile, it's... yeah, as 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 you're sort of saying that, and um, Baldor, uh, Rauder, and Frida, you come round the corner here into this next part of the room. There is a very bright um, area in front of you. There is a, um, a sort of a black and green velvet carpet in the center of the room with a large circular table with no chairs around it that seems to be dominating the center of the table. It has a sort of a glass dome that seems to be... The only way to really describe it is it seems to be like it's filled with clouds. Mm. I touch the glass. Okay. Um, yeah, you uh, make your way over to this large piece of glass. Um, as you place your hand onto it, uh, it seems to glow briefly. Uh, um, you can, you feel like a slight pinch um on your in your hand uh, as this goes like as if uh, like splinters in the end, ends of your hand in the moment as this goes on um you see the clouds kind of part on this map of of d- descriptions of that on that one and you see before you a the landmass of of Grimea, you think um you've never seen a map this detailed uh, in that respect uh there have only been, you know, barely, barely scrawled kind of uh, mountains. But you see mountains, rivers, seas, and forests. Uh, and in an eye blink, you suddenly are seeing like an, a blazing inferno that seems uh, inferno that seems to overwhelm it. Uh, the forests then wither to ash. The seas and the rivers boil away, and the mountains grumble. Only patches of the world remain as these flow away from the the dead spots, as if the survivors of some great calamity seeking a solace and safety from one another and yeah the clouds then sort of cover the uh, orb once again Jotun that's what did, did everyone see that those closest absolutely would have seen uh, that, that something was going on you got much more of a how would we say it? You felt like you were above the world, looking down almost in the, in that moment. It was a, it was much more of an experience. From the others saw something, but nothing compared to what you you gained from that in those moments. Uh, she just goes wide eyed and smiles and just like yes. What? What happened? Yes. yes, I do not understand what just happened. It- you will see that. I saw the strange lights. It was it was like looking down upon the world and it all caught a blaze and it looked like this the end. This has are to you speaking of Jotun returning? Are you speaking of Ragnarok? Yes. Why did you look so happy? That's bad. No, it's a glorious fight that's coming our way. To die in battle is one thing. Just to, to perish in fiery brimstone is, is not the way I want to go. Uh, does anyone else try anything in in these moments? Yeah, Z- Aziza would. Well, I'll, I still have to tech magic up. So, what do I get from this table? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is in this is the most powerful thing you have ever <laughs> ever laid eyes on, <laughs> magic wise, uh, in your in your in your entire time as uh, as this is going on. I apologize, I don't have the schools of magic to hand on this one, but yeah, it's yeah, it's intense sort of divination. Yeah, yeah. Oh, divination. D- divination illusion, right? Yeah, I would say it's yeah. probably giving off both. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so um Zisa audibly gasps, which is the most expressive you've ever seen her. Um and she'll say, This item is powerful. Uh it could be that what you were shown was to some extent true. What will be what could be if the course of things remain. 
Can I try touching what it? Caused it? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah, do you 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 attempt to touch it, Zisu, in the moment? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the cloud. You get a slight stinging sensation. The clouds part, and um, yeah, you glimpse the mountains of Grimir here and there. Uh, the giant serpent sea connecting all of it. Uh, uh, even uh, smaller, lower islands off to one side, where the one you now stand upon, you can even make out at a distance a as it starts to sort of move close as your hand drifts you sort of move closer and you can see a tower in in this position on an on on an on an odd island a village maybe three or four days away not too not too too, too far away and that that's uh all I see, or is it like a momentary thing, and then it kind of goes back uh, away? It, it's 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 certainly holding as you're as you're doing this right now. Um, you can see there's mountains, there's the north, the forest, do you, uh, the forests, um, the the skies. Uh, is there anything you would fo- try and focus on in the moments? I would see. This is the same island we're on, right? It's the whole world, and you have spotted this island in amongst everything as well. Yeah, uh, it, it it kind of like it it kind of zoomed and moved and sort of drew this way. But you have seemed to have control over the space. You can look at other things if you wish, if that makes sense. I would see if I can't backtrack where this village is from where we are now. No problem. Um, as it pulls back slightly, and you look, and and you're looking at the space um, north, um, there seems to be a very long river inlet that leads leads up. But yeah, it's it's definitely a village of some description um, directly to the north. Do I see anyone living in the village? Uh, you can. You can see there are people. There are ships docked. Um, a few, a few moving around. Uh, little tiny figures uh, uh, you see uh, in amongst them. Um, little blue figures that are slightly larger than others. So, like Viking so ships. Tall, tall folk. Um, mm-hmm. Do they fly the purple flag that we were flying earlier? The banner. Uh, no, you don't see any uh, any any banners like uh, like that uh, as you as you're kind of looking. Are these tall folk? Or are these Jotun? There are at least no. There, there are some tall folk amongst them. No, you Jotun are, uh, are are almost a myth. That that that's what I was figuring. But uh. you said some were bigger, so I didn't know if maybe I was seeing them for far. Uh... No, no, no. That's fair enough. Um, but yeah, I'll uh. give you this last thing. Sort of as you sort of pull back a little bit. There, you could pick one of these things to focus on. Uh, there is. Um, you could have a look at the mountains. Uh, there's the the north area, the forests, or the sky. Does anything catch you in the moment? What did Rolf say we were here for again? Uh, well, uh, to investigate this place. It was the, the the Volve believed that this has something to do with Ragnarok and stopping it or being involved with it. And it was important because the Seers had seen this place and it needed to be found by by you all rather than uh, than others. And so you'd been sent to investigate. He knew, they is, knew there was a tower and it was here. And, and, is, and is there and a behold, myth for... Is there a myth for how Ragnarok is supposed to occur? In yes, there are. Uh, it, it is supposed to be the world is burnt by fire and is basically eaten by a serpent. Is the is the story is the kind of the story? Um, yeah. How and yeah? How much of that is just did, yeah idea? Did it, see anything? So many uh, so many different ideas and story. When Rhoda saw the, the world ended, did she see any inkling of why? Was it just the fire? She saw the fire and the burning, and it's sort of spreading out across the world um, like a cancer uh, going across the world. If that makes sense, almost no, that no way. No specifics, like no specifics in those in those moment, moments as that one is going on. Okay, and I, I apologize. What were the choices that I could focus in on again? Yeah, so in these moments, you can go the mountains, the north, the forests, or the sky. I'm going to say mountains. Okay. Um, as you, your vision sort of 
focuses down in the moments you see uh, the the mountains as you look down and there is a giant blue-skinned humanoid moving through conifer forests uh uh, as big, almost as big as the trees around him, as he as they're sort of moving among amongst them. If they are tall folk, they are the tallest tall folk you have ever seen in your life. As it's sort of the clouds start to whoosh, whoosh, back over the uh, back over the actual space again. And everybody saw that, like like they did with, with Correct. Router? Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Zisa pulls her hand back and just looks at everyone and says, "That was a Jotun." I told you, I told everyone. I knew they were coming back. I heard it from my ravens. They are myths. Or are they not, not a myth? We can know if this is showing us what is by going to the village to the north. We can follow the river. If the village is there, then we can stay on the train of thought that this is showing us what is and that the Jotun have indeed returned. This is something Rolf would want to know. We need to find him. Perhaps he needs to interact with this table. Maybe it can show him things. He can see more than us. Okay, fair enough. Uh, Child. As, as this is going on, yeah, go what? ahead, Zisa. Would you come and touch the table? Being from a different place, maybe it would interact with you differently. I am... Um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm okay with that. I am... Um, it, it's very strange, but... And yeah, she'll uh, uh, literally... Um, Put a put a hand out to it, and then we'll um, uh, literally press it. She, she almost pulls back when it sort of stings for a moment, but she carries on uh, um, looking as this is going on. Um, unlike the last few times when people, when you guys have been looking at this, in when she activates it, uh, the world is just burning. Uh, the great mountains have been shattered. The serpent sea is filled with a massive writhing snake there is no glimmer of green forests or patches of water only ruin and everybody next to the table needs to make a constitution saving throw please all right oh, much, oh including the kid the including the kid yeah yeah, yeah how, yeah. how yeah. far is next to the table am i am i safe or? uh balder you're I fine think. hodo you're fine i think uh yeah. frida as well it's just gonna be the ones around I'm the table ten foot away, yeah. yeah that's a little bit i, I would be walking towards the bottom anyway that's what i was gonna see no gonna... problem no problem I get it. And the DC is 13 that we're aiming Ooh. for here. Yeah, we all did great. Okay, right. fair I enough. I got a six. <laughs> uh, as, as this is all going on, yeah, you all feel pain uh, for a little bit as this is all going on. And uh, you feel uh, you um, partly like your breath is trying being sucked out in the moments uh, as this is all going on. Um, but only uh, Blythe, you're the only one that um, it just it feels like you've you've been knocked for sex in the moment. Uh, you will gain one level of exhaustion from this as uh, oh, uh, as this oh. is all going on. And then you watch everyone. You watch the whole thing uh, go where there were clouds go clear as glass in the moment as it passes. And you're like, what? What the hell was that? What the, what, what's hell in this world? There is, there hell. is hell. Hell, hell is hell. hell. Yeah, just yeah, one one, hell. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just one hell. Yeah, uh, on that one. Um, and I think, yeah, I think we'll we'll say with uh, with the, with the silence of this thing going clear and uh, breaking in the moments. I think uh, we'll. Well, I think this is where we will call it for this first episode. I think, and we'll uh, we'll continue on from there. I think, but. Um, yeah, well done, everyone. First episode down. Raiders is well and truly uh, hey. underway. Exactly. And then, uh, yeah, we will reconvene next time and uh, 
and go from there. So uh, yeah, I will uh, end the stream and we are done. But well done. <laughs>